All right. Saturday night live stream. Get it off your chest. Welcome, everybody. Appreciate everybody jumping in. I'm sure it'll it'll get a little more crowded here in a bit. Still a little early on the West Coast, but it is Saturday night live stream. Get it off your chest. The show where you can come on this live stream. Shortly, I'll be putting a link, a live link in the chat, and you can click on that link and join the live panel. If you have never done it before, I'm going to give you... I'm going to give you a little bit of advice. Give it a shot. Um, speaking of shots, we got uh, nut shots in the house here tonight. Awesome, buddy. Good to see you. Emmanuel Goodson, Godson, good to see you. English with Mr. Finn. Mr. Finn, we'll have you on here shortly also for sure. Dip in. Dip in. How you doing tonight? But uh, welcome, everybody. Tonight is Get It Off Your Chest Saturday night. I want to welcome my awesome panel. Um, we are missing Gonzo. I'm sure he'll jump in soon, hopefully. Um, Frank Pesci and Man, Mantidote, Primal Man. Frank Pesci, tell everybody how they can find you. Hey, what's up, guys? Frank Pesci here. Appreciate you joining in on tonight's live cast. You guys can find me at Instagram, Frank underscore Pesci. Uh, you can also find me on YouTube, Frank Pesci, uh, and, and check me out. Very much into uh, you know helping everybody around me come up building community and uh man just just putting together the power of that mastermind which together we all contain and make up so thanks for joining us tonight we're going to have a lot to talk about and i'm going to say one more thing is talk to frank pesci about crypto he is the expert he's the guy you want to go to guys so um he's the guy let me tell you um i've done a few changes in my crypto so uh and it's thank thanks to frank and i'll be talking to him personally about that soon, but reach out to him with that, guys. So if you're thinking about investing, um, I'm sure he has some good investing advice in in uh, cryptocurrency, uh, Bitcoin, whatever you want to call it. So let's go to man. Man, how you doing tonight? Hey, I'm doing great. First Thanks, of all, I want to I want to tell everybody, uh, uh, Emmanuel, Nutshots, English from Mr. Finn, Dippin. Thank you all for being here as always. I love to I love to interact with y'all in the chat. Uh, but you can find me at Primal Man, as you see on the screen on YouTube. Just type in Primal Man, you'll find me there. Monday Night Man Hour is on Monday nights at 8 p.m. on my channel. Be sure to check that out. And on Instagram, you can find me at Mantidote, M-A-N underscore T-I-D-O-T-E, like antidote. There, at Mantidote on Instagram. So check it out. Thank you, Tony. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. You guys check, check out these awesome guys and these content creators. They're both really doing great things for, for everybody, not just for men, for men and for women. So, and that's what we're here about. You know, we're here. It, this is not just a man show, but we, we respect women. We look for their best interest. We look for men best interest. We're about life in general here. So that's what we're promoting is a good quality life. Living the best life you can. I think that's really, really important. So one thing I, I think to get it off your chest, I usually start it out myself. And tonight I want to start out with um, being authentic, okay? Being an authentic man or an authentic woman, a woman, okay? So I'm going to read something from, from dictionary. What authentic says is not false or copied, genuine, real. Another description is having an origin supported by unquestionable evidence, authenticated, verified, representing one's true nature or beliefs, true to oneself or to the person identified, entitled to acceptance or belief because of agreement with known facts or experience, reliable, trustworthy, in law executed with all due formalities. There's also another... Um, definition in the music. I don't think that's going to be um, applicable here, but that's the definition of, of the definition of being authentic. So when we look at an authentic man, I've, I've had some thoughts about this today and being an authentic man. Now, authentic says be real. It's be who you are. This is the question I have for the panel. Does And this is where I think there's a discrepancy in the word authentic. Does it mean that it's good when you're authentic? You following me? In other words, I think people can be, sure. you, can, you can be an asshole, but you are authentic. You are an asshole. 
I mean, so do people you is this word used always in a good connotation? Is it ever used like, you know, this guy's authentic, but he's a jerk, but he's authentic. So that was kind of my thoughts on it. You guys want to go on that? Frank? Go ahead, Mantador. I know that you said you might be stepping out a little early. So why don't you go ahead, brother? Yeah, I uh, I can always appreciate someone that is authentic. Kind of what you see is what you get kind of guy. Um, I think authenticity doesn't always mean uh, a really nice, sweet, kind person. You know, sometimes authenticity is uh, whatever that person desires to do. And he's true to that, true to that. And so that would be authentic, good or bad. And so it's it's good to see that. It's good to see authentic people in a fake world. Good or bad, it's good to know who you're dealing with. And that's all, that's all I wanted to say about that. So it doesn't really mean, you know, I think. When okay. Somebody, all right. Yeah. When somebody hears the word authentic, you want to say, okay, they're authentic. That's a good thing. Okay? Right. Authent authenticity or being authentic is called being real. So it doesn't necessarily mean that it's good. That's right. Frank, what do you think about that? Okay. So I just, I wanted to write it down because it's, it's a, it's a concept or a thought that I have. Um, and I wanted to make sure that I use the right words. What somebody does is why they do it. So if you want to know why somebody is doing something, if you want to know what their motives are, you just need to look at it, what it is that they're doing. Okay? That's how one way to identify whether or not somebody's being authentic with you. What are the deep-seated motives and agendas that pushes people's actions? Secondly, if you look at it from a biblical context... You know, we're all familiar with the commandment, right? It says, do not bear false witness against thy neighbor. And we think about that as don't say something evil about your neighbor. But it should also mean don't say something nice about your neighbor if your neighbor is not a nice person or it's not it's not true words to say something nice about them. Be authentic. If somebody asks you in confidence your opinion about somebody on a matter where there's trust and there's confidence and, and um, you know, leeway for you to speak on this, tell the truth, be authentic about it. You're going to save a lot of heartache and a lot of headache, and you're going to put yourself in a position where your authenticity represents your character and it represents that you're essentially courageous. So, and I'm not talking about storming the islands of Iwo Jima here. I'm just saying you stand on what's right. You point out what's wrong. You speak when you're supposed to speak. You listen when you're supposed to uh, listen. And I think being authentic is the best thing that you can ask for in relationship with somebody as a characteristic because there's no room for guessing. And you don't have to worry about somebody like that stabbing you in the back, let's say. Or is this person later down the line going to be untrustworthy? If you have somebody who's authentic, you're going to know right off the bat what it is that you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so there you go. I, those are my thoughts on it, Tony. What yeah. do you think? So, no, that's great because basically what you said, too, is authenticity doesn't necessarily mean that it's a good thing. In other words, somebody being authentic can be that person that they are, whether it's good or bad. And that's yeah. something that I've thought about, you know, and we and we now when I, when I talk about authenticity, authenticity, do you guys think it means tra transparency? Because I think I think there's a level of transparency that people need to to understand. Now, when I say being transparent, I don't live in the past. And a lot of people do. You have to bring up my past. Oh, God, this is what's happened to me. Um, in fact, man, you quoted me one time and I said, sometimes you just got to let things die. And you do. And, you know, when I said that and I saw you quote that to me that I'm like, you know what, that makes there, even though I said that, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to let things go. You have to live in the present. Mm -hmm. Too many people live in the past. And living in the past, to me, is not authentic. So what do you guys think? Is, is transparency, is that authentic? I don't think so, Frank. 
I think that there is times to be transparent and there's times not to be transparent. It depends on what your, your goals are, your actions, your motives, and the circle that you're involved in. Mm -hmm. You know, if I own a company and I do, um, you know, my employees are not necessarily going to be looking at our tax returns mm -hmm. or, you know, looking at all the same uh, reasons why we take certain actions and make decisions within the framework of our company. So, you know, it depends on the context of the relationship. You know, transparency may be very necessary. If I'm a leader of, you know, a, a group with a purpose where everybody kind of has a voice and it's, you know, one of those kind of like open source kind of relationships, then, yeah, I think transparency might be important. But it really depends on, on the context of how we're speaking about it. Do you, do you want to fra frame a scenario or anything and we can talk yeah. about or? Yeah, you know what? I'll, I'll frame a scenario showing weakness. That's transparency sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's okay to show. No, in other words, if a man is reaching out to a man, I think it's okay to show his weakness. But if the man is reaching out to his wife, probably not a good idea to show your weakness. She wants that rock. You know, mm -hmm. he doesn't want to be the rock. She wants that rock. And that's a quote from my brother. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. right. You know, yeah, I agree. I think, I think you can you can be sometimes you you can't be transparent with your business partners or your your, your employees, I should say. There's things that that you have to deal with that doesn't pertain to them. So you don't have to like vomit everything in transparency in the name of transparency onto your wife or into your your girlfriend or your coworkers or, or your uh, employees as well. If you're a business owner, you don't have to vomit everything to be considered transparent. But authenticity, I don't think equals transparency at all. And I agree with what Frank said. It depends on the context as well. But but I do think a lot of people think that being transparent yeah. is being authentic. That's right. Show to me, transparency can show weaknesses. Transparency yeah. is also we get into um, is you know having people hold you accountable. And again, you know, I think it's cool that there's groups that other men hold each other accountable. Women will hold each other accountable for, for their actions. Um, I'm a big firm believer in holding myself accountable. That's for me, that's really, really important is holding myself accountable to myself. Mm -hmm. In other words, I know the difference between right and wrong, good and evil. I know that. I know the difference. So to me, you know, and all these terms, um, you know, being accountable, um, transparency, I think they all kind of blend together, you know? So um, anybody else, jump in, man. Feel, feel free. So you're saying, you're saying authenticity and transparency kind of blend together a little bit? I think that, I think that people will mistake authenticity. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, I think yeah. that people will mistake being authentic by being transparent. And transparency, yeah. again, like Frank said in business, you're not going to show uh, – you're paying your employee or whoever for the time that they're on there. They don't need to know what you're making. That's 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 has nothing to do with them, yeah. you know. And and let's go down the road of – let's go down the road of a content creator. And and the reason I'm saying that is, is because um, transparency as a content creator sometimes is good, sometimes is bad. But I also think there's a difference. I think the opposite of being of being authentic is a LARPer, okay, is LARPing, which is, if for anybody who doesn't know, that's live action role playing. I think that is the exact opposite of being authentic. Again, you don't have to be completely transparent. But if you're talking about something, I expect you pretty much to live that life. Mm -hmm. So... Anybody jump in? I would agree with that. I would agree with that. And then, like you said, it's sometimes easy. You know, I, I want to bring up a pr perspective, too, about some guys sometimes will talk about things that they're yearning to be in a good way. And so they might not be at that point yet, but they're talking about it in order to sort of like – share what they've learned but at the same time move in that direction even though they're not quite at that place yet they're moving that way and so i think that's something too that you can kind of smoke on and think about is maybe someone's talking about something that they yearn are yearning to be in the future but might not quite be in that spot yet so that's well, one take let, let is there a difference between 
Of course, yeah, between genders, but mm. is there a difference, do you guys think being, is there a difference as a person, say male or female, man or woman, is there a different, different, um, I'm not sure the word I'm looking for, but is there a different meaning to being authentic as a woman or authentic as a man? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Our roles are different. Our jobs are different. You have to be authentic to your role. Whatever that role, whatever, whatever role that you're you're living, you have to be authentic to that. And a woman's role is different from a man's role. So, no, it wouldn't be the same thing at all. What do you say about that, Frank? Authenticity. You have to be authentic to God. Yeah. You have to be authentic to the Lord, man. You know, if you're, if, you know, we're all men and women and we, we all have light and life inside of us. And if we're not going to take the opportunity to discover who we are and spend time in authentic relationship with God, then we're LARPing anyway, right? We're just going through life with, you know, limited information on, on, on what we think we ought to do. Um, I think if a person wants to be the best version of themselves, then they need to spend that time alone. They need to spend that time developing themselves. They should spend that time, in my opinion, with God, mm -hmm. and they should become a vessel. And then in that case, whatever does come forth from them will be born of something greater. It, it won't be limited to just a set of ideas. Uh, anything else that we just try to do in our own power, we're eventually going to hit a wall somewhere. And when we do, you know, there'll be somebody there conveniently to point it out for us. So yeah. Yep. In terms of authenticity, man, uh, that what I say. Yeah. Frank, you got away with words, man. Yeah, he, he really does. He, he just, it's funny you said that because I he really made me think there. I just went and opened the door because I'm going to fire up a pipe. But I'm listening and I'm like, all right, how am I going to respond to that? Because Frank has a really specific way of of um, of describing something. And, he does, and, yeah. And just um, – it's it's uh, I'll just call it very. Um, I'll say Frank is very authentic, um, and I'm and I mean that with the with the. With the <laughs> and I really really do. Um, you know, I'll I'll, I'll tell you what. You know, I'll tell you why because you know you're asking this question, and I know that there's a lot to this question, so I don't want to just open my mouth and dump something out. So I'm sitting here in silence, and I, I'm praying. I'm connecting. I'm being authentic and, and I'm allowing myself to become a vessel to speak these words because maybe these words are going to have an impact on somebody or maybe resolve a situation. Uh, yep. So, you know, I'm not my own. I'm bought with a price, as they like to say, you know, scripture. And uh, that's it. I'm by no means perfect, you know, but, you know, I wake up every day, uh, you know, with the intention of living my life in, in this capacity. And when I when I step too far outside of those lines, you know, I have to be ready to recognize that and pull myself back because, man, I'm 36, man. I got wife, children, business. You know, I've done a lot, um, you know, and because of all that, you know, I've learned what works and what doesn't, you know, in my own experience. And I have a lot more to learn and a lot more to do. And I don't want to pretend that I'm the source of those things, man. I'm just, yeah, I'm enjoying the journey. So, yeah, I wanted to say, too, uh, to just kind of like bounce off what Frank said about the ego, like we're driven by our ego a lot of times. I like to think that my steps are already ordered. My steps are already cut out for me. All I have to do is listen. That's it. Listen and, and, and obey. And uh, that's the way that I live my life. That's Man. I think Frank would agree that's his way of being authentic, too. That's my way of being authentic. So you're talking about listening to your woman, right? And obeying everything. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Just, Just my woman. <laughs> <laughs> I think everybody knows that was a joke. I think they've been here long enough. Yeah, I'm going to drop the link in the chat. I'm going to invite two, <laughs> only two people on right now. I'm going to invite on Nutshots, and I want to invite English with Mr. Finn. Mr. Finn, I sent you a link in Instagram, but I'm going to throw it in the chat right now. <clears throat> but um, English with Mr. Finn and Nutshots, I'm, I'm inviting you guys on right now. You guys want to jump in the conversation um, and jump in live. That would be That would be awesome. So link is in there. What you do, if, if anybody hasn't done this before, what you do, just so you know, is you click on that link. You can put in the name you want. Um, I'd like to call it No Avatar Saturday if possible. <laughs> but um, if you have to have an avatar, that's okay too. If I know who you are and you have an avatar, I'm okay with that. 
Um, like uh, like JC, if he's watching, we haven't seen him in a while. Man, you are welcome. Always got great input. In fact, we haven't seen him in a couple of weeks. I hope he's okay. So, mm -hmm. yeah. and here comes Mr. Finn. I'm going to bring him in right now. Awesome. Here he is. There he is. Peace. Hey, guys. How you doing? I'm doing well. A little tired today, but I'm doing well. Yeah. Good to see good. you guys. Good, good, good. Um, like the topic. Yeah, I, 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 um, I want your, uh, you know, I always start. I'm going to bring on nutshots here too. This is, this is. Here he comes. I'm going to bring him in. <laughs> bring him on in. Yeah, he hey! is. There he is. <laughs> another mother. Yes, sir. This is. Here he comes. I'm bring him in. Bring him on in. Yeah, he is. I think he's got to get off the YouTube page. Yeah. yeah. I think we got a little loop going. So it first happened to me the first time. Yeah. You got to get off the YouTube page and get on the streamline page, streamyard page. Yeah. I, can you hear me? I did that. Yeah, we I got hear you. You're good. You're good. Welcome, Nut Shots, and welcome, Mr. Finn. Good. Thanks for having me. Oh, I want, I want everybody again. watching this to recognize these two guys channel. So uh, first of all, Mr. Finn, why don't you give out your info real quick and tell what you do? Okay. Well, I'm, I'm pretty easy to find English with Mr. Finn, both Instagram and YouTube. I have Facebook, but I don't really use it. Um, and my, my goal, my objective online is to help people be better communicators, whether they be uh, English learners, which I started my channel and I was thinking about English teachers to help them with their lessons. And then I'm kind of, trying to stretch out more to even native speakers, just because I fear that language has lost its, has lost its meaning. You know, words are thrown around too easily and, and not enough people can articulate exactly what they want to say. And there's lots of confusion happening nowadays. So I'm trying to just help in that. So English with Mr. Finn, find me and I'm there when willing to help. Well, you know, it's funny you say that because what happens is, it's like when I find myself saying, me and my brother, I'm like, I, I should be saying my, my brother, brother and I. <laughs> my brother and I. But that's okay. <laughs> I, I, you know what? It's funny because that's something. Every time I think of that, I'm like, or I type it out, it's like, uh, all right, Mr. Finn's going to get on me for this. <laughs> no, it's okay. I, uh, uh, what, the way you say it, me and my brother, that's, that's accepted. It's informal. It's uh, you know, colloquial, so that's no problem. But my brother and I is more, more appropriate. And I will not shame anyone publicly. I promise that. I will never do that. I, I, uh, I mean, we all have to save face. You know what I mean? And I will go to someone privately first and like make a correction or something. Uh, but yeah, don't worry. I'm not, I'm not one of those, I'm one of those people just to like point my finger at you and kind of show myself to be superior. I'm learning as I go. It's amazing how much I've learned being a teacher, you know? So. Yeah. Um, I want to welcome nut shots. How you doing, man? And do you do you do you mind if we give your real name or your first yeah, name? No, you can give my name, Marty Cohen. It's Marty or Martin, correct? Whatever is comfortable. You know, my mother called me Martin. Everyone calls me Marty. Okay, um, I'm going to add Gonzo. Gonzo, welcome. Um, glad yeah, you're here. There he is. Everybody, give him a hand clap. Woohoo! Nut shots. I want to talk to you, Martin. I want to talk to you, and I want people to go to your channel because I'll tell you what, man. I just subscribed. I, it is, it is, um, you've got about, I think about five, six videos on there and you did Tinder experiments. So for guys with dating apps and that are interested in that, um, you did a, you did, you know what? I've, I've seen a lot of different videos, not a lot, but enough. And I thought your take on it and your narration was, was not only was it entertaining, um, it was, it was good, man. It was good. I enjoyed it a lot. And and the reason that is because I've done dating apps. I mean, I've done it. I've done it. Let's put it this way. I remember when you could go on Craigslist. Does anybody yes. remember that? Yeah, I remember Craigslist. I okay. Remember. And it was Craigslist personals. And that was, I don't want to say maybe that was a new one. And I think Match came up after that. So I think it was kind of funny. But, but, um, Martin, you're, uh, you're, um, did we lose somebody here? We lost man. That's all right. He's going to jump in and out. But um, give everybody a kind of a breakdown on your channel. I really want them to check it out because I've been going through your videos and I just find them, I find them fascinating. And <laughs> I one appreciate thing, the kind words. 
Yeah, and, and there's re one reason why is because um, I don't want to say um, – how do I say this? And I, I don't care about offending somebody, but you're not a typical red pill idiot. No, not at all. No, I, I, I this is what I love about you guys. Um, and I appreciate so much because I'm not an expert. I believe in statistics. Um, what got me onto Greg Adams is when he starts throwing out the suicide rates and the depression rates. And what I started before these videos, I did a divorced men's group. And I had to show them statistics saying, we're not alone. This is not, you're not, you're not, you know, don't be, don't be sad because I was very depressed at one point. And that's how I found the red pill. That's how I found you, Tony. I found your brother. Actually, I found your brother first. Um, I found, um, unfortunately I found Rolo and Rich Cooper first and they were talking down to me and I don't mean to take too many shots at them, but you guys do not talk down to anyone. We are uncensored here. Take all the shots you want. But you guys don't talk down to anyone. Yeah. And that's the difference. I work with divorced men. I have a free group. We help each other out and we, we preach the red pill. And so when I did these dating apps, it was just a joke that I saw this beta guy did 500 dates. And I was like, I want to do stats. And I thought this guy's material should be on video. And I said, but we need red pill people. We need to show people because you're going to see in future videos, especially um, the lady Melanie, she's dealing with these betas. And when you hear what they're saying to her, you cringe. And just being a masculine person is so effective. And I, I know I'm ranting, but I also don't believe in attacking women because we, I, don't, I believe in being positive. I believe in spiritually we're on this earth for a reason and people just don't know better. They're just indoctrinated with the stupidity they're hearing. And I, I just think being kind to everyone goes a lot a long way. I deal with women that lie. They, they cheat, you know, they're just catfishing. But, but you know what, this is, that's what I'm saying. You, you had a really good perspective. I don't recommend channels. I don't put somebody in my community often. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I found this real, real interesting. Um, and the reason I found it interesting because I've been down that road. I've been on those same things. I have walked on, I mean, I've walked on probably, and I say walked, and I wasn't an asshole, but I've walked on probably, I'm going to say five meetups. And I learned my lesson that I video chat usually with somebody that I've met on a at dating app. And if they won't video chat, I don't want to see them. <laughs> that It's that simple. Um, because you will be catfish in one way or another. Um, I and haven't had an issue. And I don't judge women. You know, I understand, you know, you, sometimes your picture's not the same. Sometimes things happen. And sometimes a lot of women look better than their picture. Yeah. And it, it's true. And I don't, you know, I'm not the type of guy that preaches the wall or anything. You know, if a woman hits the wall, that's her fault. And if you have a different taste, that's your taste. Okay. Mm -hmm. But there's some guys that like women that are not attractive. And I've been victim of that. I fell, fell for women that had... Were twos in looks, but tens in personalities that made mm -hmm. me feel good when I was out with them. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not as picky as a lot of people. You know, I dated, I was married for a long time and, you know, everyone has their sad story, I guess, in the red pill. Mm -hmm. But I don't mind if a woman is as unattractive if her personality is much better. You know, as, you know, there's guys that are short and there's a lot of shortcomings they have, but they're just amazing guys. I preach the same thing for women. I, I can tolerate looks and height you know the six foot three woman i mentioned in my yeah, video yeah yeah that she was, was so story. nice I, I felt so bad she wasn't mentally ready to date but again this is an example of an amazing woman and a lot of guys would not look her way because she's hot tall yet so a lot of the red pillar hypocrites saying oh women discriminate against us because we're five eight five six you know and she and she just went through hell and you know i, I believe just treat everyone nicely if you see someone's in the wrong frame of mind, it's the right spiritual thing to do. You know, um, I don't want to get preachy. No, dude, I, ran, ran away, bro. I like when it. I, when I raise my, my kids, like, you know, I'm a different faith than my ex. And my ex was very Catholic, even though she ended up being a cheating whore. Um, my kids went to church every weekend, even if they didn't have Sunday school. And my kids volunteered every time there was a church function. And I volunteered for every league to help, every food kitchen. And I believe that, you know, 
helping people is the way to go. And I believe helping men is the way to, it, it, it's these negative a-holes. Like I don't, I, I like Sandman, you know, I, I hear his videos, but then he's tacking a woman named Je Jennifer Maliski because uh, she's I, female. I, I know Jennifer personally. She spoke at 21. Yeah, exactly. And I see a video where he's attacking her and I lost interest in following him because his thing was that she's a chameleon. She's a woman. She can't understand us. And it's like, she is one of our defenders and our patriots for us. Yeah. And you're yep. attacking her for her gender. Yeah. And that's what feminists do. We yeah. can't behave like that. And, and uh, you know, there's a lot of divisions in the red pill. There's a lot of negative attacks against women. There are a lot of good women too, but it's not their fault that they were given the same material that these beta males and white knights have been given. They just need to learn. And if they're cool with us and they don't attack us, why do we attack them? Mm -hmm. You know, just, I, I really believe in being kind, but I believe in statistics. You're going to see more videos where I get panels of women and I ask their advice in the future. Like how many times have you gone on dating apps and, you know, just gone on just to chat with guys with no intention of meeting, you know, and I'm trying to teach men, this is why you don't chat forever with a woman. You got to yeah. get to the date stage. You got to get to the video chat stage. Yeah. This is, this is quality advice, man. And re, again, I'm going to say it again. I really, really enjoyed your video. Your narration was, was absolutely on point. And I, I, I really enjoyed it because you weren't, it wasn't an, it wasn't red pill rage. And for anybody who doesn't know red pill, I mean, it's the reality of red pill is just seeing things for as they are, you know, and, and the, the sexual marketplace has adopted that red pill vision okay but you can use that in all of life to me red pill was my first my first of besides the movie the matrix um of course my first introduction to red pill was in the sexual marketplace and with dating and i think it's very 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 helpful um and 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 it, and it will bleed into the rest of your life because you know we the red pill is about the truth you know, now that's going to be a major contradiction to guys that are black pill. You know that right now, because black pill is is um, is all about the truth. I mean, they say, but also the truth, you know, we can get into we can go down a whole rabbit hole with the truth. We can talk about a universal truth. Gonzo, what's a universal truth? What would you say a universal truth oh, is? Fuck. <laughs> a universal <laughs> truth. I mean, if you turn the lights off, they're off. I mean, I'm yeah. trying to think. You know, one plus I mean, one is two. Yeah, one plus one is two. I've talked to you know what? I've had long debates with with guys about why one plus one equals two. <laughs> it uh, yeah, really has crazy. gotten. It's really gotten that granular. Like, uh, it, it sounds insane, and that's because it is. But. Uh, like, yeah. And I would just say to comment earlier, like I would consider somebody like Sandman, I would say he is, uh, he's kind of like a black pill sort of, sort of channel. Um, and, and, and what's your opinion of think before you sleep? Cause I've also seen him attack so many good people. And who is that? I've not heard of him. Who is think that? He's, he, he's imitation Sandman. He's got a huge following. I, I don't know who he is. Think Before You Sleep is a very MGTOW, black pill, just like Sandman. Mm, Ooh, okay. yeah. he has some good stuff, but then when he goes on the attack about red pillars who date and get into relationships, it kind of like, you know, I'm not, I'm not finishing this video. I, I, I kind of watch too much videos on YouTube. Because, <laughs> you know, I, I'm, when I do work, I have a normal 9 to 5 job. It's on my TV all the time in the background. No, that's good. I mean, you know what? You're a, you're a, again, you know, I, I threw your, threw your channel in the, um, in my community. And the reason I did that is, is that I thought it was going to be helpful for, it was a really different perspective on the dating apps. And, uh, you know, you know, people can say they're not using them, but there is a lot of people using them. Um, you know, I'm going to, I'll disclose something. I'll be a little bit transparent. I actually met recently, I'll say in the past two months, a very attractive woman that I enjoy spending some time with. Um, I, I, you know, and it was from a dating app. Um, it was unexpected. 
Um, but I'm okay with it. it. It is what it is. I don't, I don't, I don't look at this anger like um, where, you know, every woman on a dating app is garbage, but because I think women are searching also, I think they're, they're searching also. And we talk about the topic, what I, my get it off your chest topic was about authenticity. Sometimes women are being authentic by how am I going to get out there? I'll, I'll do a dating app or I'll try that, you know? So I think that's, um, I think that's, um, I think that's important, but I think you're, man, I just, I want every, I'll put a, um, I'm going to put the link, the descript, your uh, YouTube link in the description of this video for sure, because I want people to check out. It's a different take. So any guys watching, check it out. You know, um, I know there's, you know, we all, we always talk about pills, 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 pills. I'm almost sick of pills. Do I, <laughs> you know, do I think everybody on this panel right now lives a red pill lifestyle? Yes, I do. And I think everybody would agree with it. But we do kind of have our own versions of that, which I don't think is a bad thing. But I also think there's there's an anger phase. There's that there's that when guys when guys enter this this corner of of help from other men, I think that a lot of times it's throwing the blame on the woman. And I'm big about accountability. And I know like Mr. Finn, you're in the fraternity of excellence. They're big on accountability, holding <clears throat> yourself accountable, um, extreme ownership. And I think that's Jocko Willis. Jocko Willix. Yeah. Yes. Jocko's a king, man. Own your shit, guys. You know, not every woman you have dated is um, is BPD woman, borderline personality disorder. That's well, not gotta, the case. You got to think about it, too, Tony. It's like if every woman is like that, you have to think of what's the common denominator in all the situations. You know, so. Yeah. That gets back to the accountability and, um, you know, look at yourself as well. And what, it, what I think a lot of times too, us guys and maybe single guys and just people in general, what, what's your aim? You know, what's your end game? Are you just going to have some fun? Or you want to play or are you look for something serious? Are you just looking out for yourself? Um, I think that has to take into be taken in consideration as well, you know? Yeah. Well, I just want to ask the crew um, what they feel about this because I'm getting beat up from a lot of the red pill and, and MGTOW community. I believe that if you're true red pill, you can get into relationships because you're able to walk away. You're able Ow. to walk away at the right time. That's my opinion because I had two relationships after my divorce. They were wonderful. And I just knew when it was time to walk away and it ended in a loving way. Both my relationships were very loving because I walked away at the right time. And without being negative or nasty, I when I ended my relationship, I thanked them for the time and the love they gave me, and I just and we we have nothing bad to say. We sometimes we send Christmas cards out, and I get beat up from the red pill community for sharing that. <laughs> I don't understand. Well, the black pill community actually beats me. Yeah, up. well, I'm gonna put up a couple comments. Dippin is in the comment, and he's uh -huh. talking with Al. And he says, black pill is my reality because of my lack of looks and black pill is my life experience. Your life experience could be red pill. Um, Dipping is so wrong. Dipping, there's, there's, yeah. there's opportunity for you out there. Um, yeah, I, I've, got to, I've got to agree with that, you know? Um, I, think, I think confidence goes a lot further than looks. You know, um, if, you, if, you, if you're secure, <laughs> yeah, I mean, but you got to understand, not everybody, not everybody sees beauty the same way, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, something else that needs to take into consideration, and this is, goes more to the LTR, right? Long-term relationships, but beauty fades. It's it's what you cultivate, like who you are and what you project. And, and if you're able to focus on yourself and who you are and what you bring, you're going to, you know, you're going to like emit this confidence and that's attractive, you know? So looks, I mean, that's, that's very, I don't know. Everyone let's, has different taste. Let's do this for every woman and every man that's watching right now. Let's put this conversation into context. I, I'd like to get everybody ages. I'm going to start. We'll go right from Frank to Mr. Finn, the nutshots, the gonzo. I'm 58. So you're getting a 58-year-old perspective. Frank? 36. Okay. Mr. Finn? 42. 42. 42. Four there, and gonzo? <laughs> 22. 22. 22. So you're getting a pretty good broad perspective here of, of guys who have, who are, 
Um, Gonzo recently got married, which I think that's awesome. Frank is married. Mr. Finn is married. I'm going to marriage. Me and me and me and Martin are probably the only two that aren't married, and because uh, we're bold, and that's okay, <laughs> okay with it, you know. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I want to go to Frank on this because he's sitting back there, kind of quiet. But I'm curious of his 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 um, a take from a married guy on dating apps. Have you ever done him? Yeah, back in the day, I used to use Craigslist and all that stuff. So, you know, I remember I remember what that was like. Um, in fact, I met my wife online, believe it or not. I met my wife through AOL back in the day, through chat room. And we got together, and, you know, it's been, man, it's been 16 years now. Um, if I can, I, I want to say something about what red pill means, right? Because Nutshots said, you know, red pill may mean something different to different people. Uh, you know, I, for me, as I see red pill and as I am red pilled, what that means to me is that in, re in context of relationships or in the context of anything where I'm putting myself forward, that doesn't mean that I avoid relationships. That doesn't mean that I avoid, uh, you know, intersexual, you know, personalities, intergender dynamics. It just means that I'm aware of, you know, what the realities are. Uh, what dangers may p possibly exist and how am I going to approach it with the best intelligence that I have? Because if I look at it from an intelligence gathering perspective, I understand the environment. I understand the situation. I understand the opportunity. I, from there, I'm going to outline you know, my strategy, my tactics, and how I'm going to move forward to accomplish whatever the agenda or the outcome is that I seek. So for me, being red pill is about being awake. Uh, I don't have any anger towards anybody. I understand that feminism in this country is an absolute problem. Uh, anytime where you pit one group against another and you create a narrative uh, through our communications apparatus over and over again and try to drive this home to divide people, that's a problem and, and it shouldn't exist. Um, but the fact of the matter is that uh, because it exists and because it is, it is a problem, you need to uh, adopt certain strategies and, and mechanisms so that you can deal with it and be successful. Uh, in the framework of those dangers that exist in, in those environments. So I'm fortunate that that I am married. I don't have to date anymore because I know that those are uh, dangerous waters these days. Um, but if I did, I would I would have a very clear and defined strategy on how I would go forth about it. Uh, the first thing I could think of is I, I may I may or may not look for a wife from who's from outside of the United States because that culture is you know maybe not as prevalent outside of the US as it is as it is here. Or I may look for a woman in a, in a certain venue or a very, very specific profile that I'm looking for um, because, you know, whatever, you know, we're living in crazy times. I guess you all have to have, you know, whatever your, your, your outcome desire is. You know, if you just want to hook up or whatever, then that's one thing. But if you're looking for a relationship, I don't see anything wrong with that. I think relationship is good. It is not good for man to be alone. It's good to have relationship. And if you look at some successful relationships that are out there, um, people that I know who are married, who are older, who have raised their kids, they travel together, whatever, they do things together, they work on projects together, uh, they homestead together, whatever, they, they do things together. And you have a balance of a male and a female, and they're doing things and they're accomplishing things. And, and for me, that's a good formula. Uh, the problem is when you let culture and when you let the outside world get in the middle between you and your wife or you and your relationship and and God is not the center or your principles of, of marriage and family are not the center, then it's a recipe for absolute disaster. So for me, again, being red pill is about being awake and being on your post and not allow as a man, as a father, as a husband, being on my post and not allowing, uh, you know, these certain influences to come into my domain, Right. My domain where I'm a, I'm a king and that doesn't mean that I'm a king over, you know, the city of Jerusalem, but I'm definitely a king in my household. I'm definitely a king in, in the circles of influence that I have because I make sure that I protect that dominion and, and I fulfill the role uh, that has been assigned to me. So uh, nutshots, I just wanted to, to touch on that because I thought that was a really good question. And I think red pill means a lot of different things to a lot of different people that in a nutshell really is what it means to me. Yeah, that's hey, awesome. Quick question, Tony. When, when, well, real quick, when you said the word king, I'm going to throw this up there. Get your tactical soap. Use coupon code King for a sweet discount. And I want to thank everybody who has ordered 
tactical soap. When I say ta- and and all you guys know this is great stuff, but check it out. It's it's this is a business. Good friend of mine, Scott Carr. I'm I know Frank Pesci knows Scott Carr. Um, great guy. This is a business that was built by a man, by a man for men. It's got great all natural soap. Um, you've got you've got beard oil. This is all pheromone infused, and then you got the new cologne sticks. Okay, so also too tonight again, nobody had responded from when I did it last week, but or two weeks ago. But tonight, the best comment tonight about this brand new Brio nose trimmer and ear trimmer. Best comment in the comment section is going to get this brand new in the box Brio. It's a um, it's a nose and ear trimmer. You're going to get some mustache wax, and you're going to get some tactical soap. As long as you're in the lower 48 states, you get this tonight. But this is the comment in the comment section of this video, not in the live chat. But you'll get this. So I want the best comment why I should send this to you, and you're going to get it. So that's that's tonight's giveaway. And coming soon, just so you know, as soon as I give that away, we're giving this away. This is brand new in the box. This is a Beardscape, okay? Beautiful, brand new. This is going out probably in the next week or two. So best comment, gets the nose and ear trimmer. Order your tactical soap. And I want to thank everybody since Thursday night that ordered their tactical soap. And the reason I'm telling you that, because I know, I don't know who ordered it, but I know a lot of people ordered it. And I appreciate that. That supports this channel. It's a pheromone infused soap, guys. Use it, it's awesome. Use every edge you can get. Why not? If you're married, if you're single, check it out. Good stuff. You're supporting my channel. You're supporting Scott Carr and Tactical Soap, a business that was built by a man for men. So check it out. That's my rant. So, and, and One more question. I think Frank might have the best answer. How do you guys feel about more uh, strong moral guidelines when looking for a partner? I know in some of the red pills, they disqualify it. And some of the red pills is the most important. I just want to know what the panel thinks, and especially Mr. Finn, because he's the new guy, and uh, you know he's, he's he's the normal guy. What do you feel about strong moral guidelines as like one, like one of the top two driving factors in a partner? Frank, absolutely. Yeah, for me, it's a must. Absolutely, it's everything. Nutshots. If I if I could take it first, if you guys don't have the same moral guidelines, uh, then when you have a disagreement. What are you going to use as a standard? Exactly. Got to have a standard. That and, this, and the kids. standard often has to be the mediator between the disagreement. Otherwise, if you have two very strong-willed people, you're either going to come to an impasse or you're going to come to, uh, you know, you're going to part ways. So if you're thinking about real relationship, moral guidelines, man, I don't, I don't see any, any, any reason why you would overlook that. Yeah, I want to chime in on that. Also, I agree completely with what Frank said. Uh, me myself, also being a Christian man, Christ says, "Don't be unequally yoked." You're not gonna, you're not gonna yoke an ox to a donkey, right? Because you're not gonna get to where you're going or what you want to achieve done at the same time. Uh, and in my situation, both my wife and myself, we are both very strong will people and and we see this in our kids it's amazing two-year-old and a four-year-old we have and both of them are extremely strong-willed and they get them from us and without the moral foundation that we have established from the very beginning of our relationship it would just be in disaster i mean we wouldn't even been together so we take we have our roles and uh my role is to lead guide protect and provide and uh, she is my support. And, you know, it's not smooth sailings all the time, but exactly what Frank said. When you have these two strong little people clashing heads, we have to resort to what guides us. What is our compass? What is our northern star? What is what keeps us? What, what's the standard that keeps us going? So for me, like when I decided to uh, look for a relationship again, and because I always wanted to be a family man. I just, that's something I always want to be. I tried the dating scene and I played around, but it, I didn't feel, feel, I didn't feel fulfilled. I didn't like it. I always wanted to be a family man. And I, I remembered when I decided to do it, I, I, it was a time I completely gave myself over to God, to Christ. I changed the way I lived my life. 
And you know, I remember telling God, if someone comes in my life, I just got notes from you. I didn't, I didn't ask for signs or anything, and everything worked out. So when I met my wife, uh, I had, we had this time, like we had to make sure that we saw things the same way, right? Not exactly everything, but the moral standards. So for me, that is really important. Well, that was really cool, Bill. Just joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 100% joking on that. You know that. That was actually really, really good. And I appreciate that because it's the way you put it is that um, you, the first thing you said is that you're a leader. Yeah, I have to be. That, that was very, very important in, 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 in your little rant there. That was very, very important. Um, and I'm going to bring man back on. Paul Galvin, are you there? Yes, I am here. Awesome. You got an avatar tonight. How come? Um, <clears throat> so my webcam isn't really, uh, working, okay. so I got to get, I want to, I want to welcome Paul, just so you, I want to welcome Paul, everybody. I, I know Frank's familiar with Paul Gonzo is I, Mr. Finn, are you familiar with Paul? Yeah, I've seen, I've seen him on the panel before. Okay. before. Um, he is now the youngest member of the panel Nutshots. He is, um, Paul, you are 19, correct? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, wow. um, but a very intelligent guy. Great. Great debater against the vegan. Absolutely. You know, him and Gonzo shredded a vegan one night. I mean, uh, you know, guys, I back on I was quick. vegan at one point, just to be honest. I have to confess. I, I apologize. What's that now? Sorry. I was vegan at one point in my life. Oh, well, well welcome back. <laughs> well, I was ill, and it actually helped me. And Okay. And then I went back to eating meat. <laughs> Good for you. That's why I say welcome back. So, <laughs> awesome. But uh, I went vegan to uh, help with my acne, and actually, it helped a lot. So I, I gave that point to to Galaxy that one night, saying like, "Yeah, you know, it works for your skin." But um, also, it's just <clears throat> I can't I can't drink a lot of dairy, or like my skin breaks out. So that's kind of what happened. Is I just cut out dairy, which is an animal product. And I, I'm figuring that that is what actually helped my skin, and not necessarily the fact that I was only eating greens. So, do you think uh, anything just had to do with your age that younger kids get acne? I mean, um, I'm noticing the older I get that it is getting less. I, I have more acne than the average person, though, for sure. Yeah. Could be or, testosterone. Could just be you're lifting. You're, if you're a young guy, you're lifting. You're going to get acne. Yeah, just from being maybe. A lifter. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, you look at guys that are doing TRT, look at their backs. They, they're they covered. When you have a high testosterone, you get acne. I mean, that's, I, that's a reality. I actually I actually figured that may have been the case. I, uh, I grew a beard before anyone like that I knew, like in school. And like, I was, I'm 6'4", and that's how I've, I've always been 6'4", since ninth grade. So... I just kind of figured I, I'm just like more developed than the average boy, and that has to do with my acne. And it's kind of funny how like the guys who were who were like clear skinned through all of school, I, I look back at their posts now and they have acne. And I'm just like bastards, just <laughs> saying how like oh, you know, like making fun of me and stuff for my acne, and I'm like now you have acne. So. <laughs> Yeah, we, we just lost we just lost Frank Pesci. Frank, I saw you in your private chat. I appreciate you coming on. I know you're having uh, some internet issues. Um, he's out in the sticks, so uh, he's having some internet issues. But if if um, I believe I have a link to his channel in the description. If not, I will make sure it's in there. And of course, I'm gonna you know I'm gonna have I'll have Mr. Finn in there. Gonzo's in there. Man's in there. I'm going to throw nut shots in there. Any of you guys watching, I don't care if it's black pill, blue pill, red pill, green pill, <laughs> pill, white pill, pink pill. I don't give a shit what pill you are. Check out nut shot stuff. In fact, Gonzo, I sent it to you. Do you get a chance to watch any of it? Um, I, I have got it queued up. I'm like, okay, good, good. I'm going to check it out. Yeah, because I found it really interesting. It was one of the best takes I've seen on dating app. I mean, to me, it was it was right on the money. Um, I, I, I worked my way. I actually worked my way from the most recent video, and then uh, I think I made a comment in the in your in your chat about um, 
I had to stop eating dinner <laughs> toward the end, and I actually did when you were talking. It's just a great storyteller, and it was just like I was, I was like, I was so into it that when you talk about the lipstick and her licking her lips, and I'm like, I got to stop eating, got to stop eating right now, and I'm going to listen to the rest of this here when I'm sitting near the fire. So, uh, but uh, yeah, it, it was good, man. And I, I, I see a lot of growth for your channel. I think that's, um, I think you gave some real quality info. So I can't, you know, again, this is, this might be to a select few or pe guys that are on dating sites, but yeah, check out Nutshots. I'm going to put a description in the, in the, uh, in the, or a link in the, in the description of this video. Um, so you can check them out, but subscribe to the channel. In fact, subscribe to everybody here. Uh, my channel, hit the like button. Mr. Finn, Nutshots. Of course, Gonzo for sure. Get your art from him. Paul Galvin, you're only on Instagram, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to give out any info right now? Uh, wait, is, is, the stream <coughs> is the stream ending? No. Oh, okay. Uh, no, it's all right. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't got anything. You want people to follow you if you want to give out your Insta or anything. So. Um, no, that, that's later. Okay. You're not uh, on TikTok, are you? No, I, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. great. That's great, man. Great question. Great question. So, but, um, you know, Anthony Velasquez, are you out there? Jump in the chat, man. We always, we always need you on, uh, we always need Anthony Velasquez on Saturday night. And I'm telling you, Anthony, if you come on tonight, it better not just say Anthony V. There better be something good because we are used to that. So, I want to see Anthony from Occupied California. I want to see Dr. Fauci. <laughs> um, I um, I want to see the classic Anthony tonight. And in fact, I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to challenge Anthony Velasquez to put something very creative for his uh, for his name tonight. So, um, uh, oh, always welcome. Always great input. So, but um, Paul Galvin, you know my get it off your chest question or my basic topic for tonight was authenticity so what is what does authenticity mean to you um <clears throat> i don't know it's really difficult to kind of i don't know i, I gotta i gotta get some more time to think about that i guess let me um we'll go to gonzo next then um gonzo we didn't hit you up on this did we oh i don't think so yeah, let, let me read let me read the dictionary version of authentic authentic. Yeah. It means not false or copied, genuine, real. It means having an origin supported by unquestionable evidence, authenticated, verified. Representing one's true nature or beliefs, true to oneself or to the person identified, entitled to acceptance or belief because of agreement with known facts or experience, reliable, trustworthy. Law executed this is law executed with all due formal formalities now the issue that i had with um authenticity and i'm going to throw this at gonzo was that you i think the word authentic can also mean you can be an authentic asshole i mean right of course yeah but does authenticity also mean transparency and this is what we kind of discussed so I'm going to bring Anthony on real quick. Bring in Anthony. There he is. What? <laughs> All this fucking Anthony lives there. Lives, Amazing. lives there. Nice. Good. Cali is uh, Sorry. I'm, fr I'm from there. <laughs> okay. Good. 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 Excellent. I love it. So um, we're going to go to Gonzo first. So what's your take on authenticity, transparency, and is authenticity just normally – um, familiarize with something that's good and can it be bad? Yeah. Well, I see like authenticity is just, um, how obviously like how legitimate a person is like, like, are they walking, are they walking the walk? Are they talking the talk, um, together? Um, and I see the transparency thing more as like, a it's own, like its own slider, like how much you want to reveal. That's basically, that's what it is. It's like how much you really want to share. Because I, I can be, or anybody for that matter, can be authentic, but not r reveal a whole lot about their life or about 
there i mean you could you can reveal your you can say a lot without revealing a whole lot about your life right and so i think that's um that may be the difference so you can you can be authentic but have kind of low transparency in one way but you could also like and i think we've talked about this uh, before is that you can you can you can you can be authentic but have like high transparency and and sometimes like we, like i know we've talked like uh like with anthony johnson last time i remember we talked about teachable moments briefly but you can ha there's a i think the the most important thing when you're talking about transparency is like is it a teachable moment or is it or are you just explaining your weaknesses are you just revealing your your weaknesses and so I think that's really, uh, I think that's the uh, the most important thing to discern. You know, what's great is you hit it right on the head because when we were talking earlier, that's what I talked about being authentic. Mm -hmm. when, when, when we talk about authentic, guys think being transparent and showing your weakness is, is a good thing. And I don't think it's necessarily a good thing. And I know Nutshots and Primal Man, we had talked earlier and I had said something, this was a while ago about Sometimes you just got to let things die. Like quit living in the past, man. Give it up. It's over. It's over. Stop living in the past. There's nothing you can do about, I mean, there, there are, re, I mean, you know, holding yourself accountable and like Mr. Finn talked about holding other men holding, there are things you can do, but sometimes, and probably most of the time, what happened in the past is the past. So Hey, I'm going to bring on JC, man. JC is awesome. Oh, there he is. Yeah, buddy. JC. Yo, what's up, fellas? How's it going? Welcome, Welcome man. Glad to have you back. Got a little bit of a... Are you driving? I think JC's driving. Uh, I think that was Mr. Finn. Oh, was that Mr. Finn? Okay. I think so. Okay. Yo, All can right. you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you good. JC, right. how are you doing tonight, bud? Good to have you. Hey, good, man. I don't have a long time tonight, but uh, I'm here for a good time. So, um, good, good. I wanted to say uh, hello to everyone on the panel. Yeah. I mentioned you earlier, man. I'm like, where's JC, man? Where's he at? Let's get him on. Always valuable. Yeah, I've let, yeah, let been me working night shifts a lot uh, the last few weekends, so I don't really have as much time to uh, be oh, online. Okay. So, tonight I'm free. And, uh, good, good. I'll join. Yeah, let, let me ask you a question. My my get it off your chest topic for tonight. My this was my personal one. Of course, anybody else can say something in the chat. Anybody on the panel want to get something off their chest? Um, but it is about being authentic. Okay, what does that mean to you? Um, <clears throat> that's a that's a great question. Um, I think uh, you know being authentic is probably just having. Um, you know, just having uh, self-confidence uh, within yourself, being optimistic, um, taking taking lessons learned from your from your life and current experiences, and applying those moving forward to become the better, stronger version of yourself. Um, just again, being confident in your in your in your own decision making, uh, helping people around you uh you know be the best versions of themselves you know try to bring people up instead of bringing people down um and uh i think just being open minded at the end of the day you know that's 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 kind of what i see uh, uh within a authentic person mm -hmm. okay now I, you know i like this because um i don't think nutshots did we go to you about this at all what happened I mean, we, did we go to you about this question at all? I don't think so. No, I, I just have a quick. We, we will. Let, let, let's let me let me touch on JC. JC, I want to ask you a question. My my um, question about authentic is that can you be an authentic asshole? In other words, somebody is authentic. We always look at as authentic being a a good quality, but somebody can be truly an asshole, truly evil, but they're being authentic. So that's kind of my dilemma. And I also talked about transparency, transparency, whether you're a content creator or you are just somebody, whether you're in a relationship, do you want to show your weakness to your woman, to your girlfriend or to your wife? I, I, I don't think being transparent all the time is a good thing. So what's your take on that, JC? 
um, maybe I'll just touch on the transparency component right off the bat. Is that I think transparency is more of a tactical move, you know, depending upon the situation that you're in. I, like and I don't think, you know, being open about everything is necessarily a good thing. It's 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 being able to uh, understand when to give pertinent information in the moment. You only give the information that you need to give and nothing else. And I think if if you're authentic, you know, going back to being confident enough and being self-aware that there's a parallel between transparency and authenticity, because if you're confident enough, you're not going to be a tell all. You're just going to say what you need to say in the moment just to just to just to um, feed the situation, you know, um, your other question about whether or not you can be an asshole and be authentic. I think absolutely. Like I think anyone who is being authentic or, you know, people who basically, you know, most authentic people, like they won't lie. They won't exaggerate. They won't pretend to be something they're not. They, they don't hang on to the past. They don't allow other people to influence the decisions that they make. They don't, uh, seek fault in others. They take accountability for themselves. And I, and I think those kind of people may be perceived as a threat within, you know, society because we like to surround ourselves with people that make us feel good. And if, and if you're somebody who's an authentic individual, that kind of goes against the grain because being authentic will bring out the faults in other people. And then that will make them feel bad about themselves, which in turn may perceive the authentic individual as an asshole. So it's kind of a fine line that you need to, that you need to navigate. And I think, you know, you, you can be an authentic person, uh, but going back to the transparency component that maybe you don't need to always demonstrate that you are an authentic person. If you, if you're confident enough with yourself and knowing who you are as a person and recognizing how that may make other people feel, sometimes you can just kind of, you know, be tactical about it again. So I don't know. That's kind of where I'm at with it. Yeah, that's no, that's a great breakdown. And when you were, when you were, um, when you were just describing that, it's funny because I'm getting, I'm getting kind of the, I'm liking the different breakdowns we're getting on this because, you know, before a Saturday night, I try to think of a first get it off your, get it off your chest question. And to me, that was my question tonight. What's authenticity? What is being authentic? And I spent all afternoon thinking about it. I was going down so many rabbit holes myself. And when you look at the definitions of what it means to be authentic, and then again, it popped into my head is it doesn't when you hear somebody, somebody will say, oh, he's authentic. That's usually like such a such a compliment. But I also think of um, of uh, Pelosi. She's authentic and I can't stand her. Um, you know, I think she's an evil bitch. So, you know, I mean, but she's being authentic. Am I am I right or am I wrong on that? I don't think she's being authentic. I just think she's part of the machine. She's part. I just think she's. I mean, I don't think any. I don't know about these, these people. people in government. Be authentic. In other words, when something is evil, evil is authentic. I mean, when we look at it, I mean, when we look at the definition, genuine, real. Those those genuine and real do not. Those are not just. When we think of, oh, he's genuine, we always put a real positive spin on it. But being real means that you can be real evil. You can be a real asshole. So being authentic isn't always a good thing. And again, this was going through my mind all afternoon. It's like I, I, I go down this rabbit hole and, and what I'm doing is, is I'm getting these great, you know, these great breakdowns from everybody um, so far who um, I know we haven't got to Paul yet, but let's go to, let's go to Anthony. Let's go to Cali is fucked and Anthony lives here. So uh, let's go to him right now. So what's your, what's your take on being authentic, Anthony? Because I'm going to tell you right now, Anthony is, is super authentic. I would give him an A plus in the authentic category. Um, yeah. So. yeah. Thank you. Uh, I want to give a shout out to uh, Nutshot because I watch his videos and they're great. <laughs> awesome, thank yeah. you, thank you for thank you for your work, man. I appreciate it. It's yeah. good stuff. I'll, I'll, I'll definitely I will promote it. It's good stuff. 
And I, I like your creativity, man. Good for uh, good for Thank doing you. that shit. Yeah. Thank you for the kind good words. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, guys, I wanted to go out to uh, Old Town Pasadena. I wanted to go out to a bar, have a couple of pops, and show you guys. I wanted, I actually wanted to be there during this live stream, you know, kind of show you how we're coming together. Everybody's uh, kumbaya, but you know what? It didn't happen. It's fucked, dude. It's fucking, it's super fucked. I, I didn't even know how fucked it was. It is fucking fucked, dude. Thank God I, I don't own a restaurant or a bar because this place is fucking fucked, dude. It's, it's beyond fucked. It's, what's the word for beyond fucked? It's, it's like super fucked. You, you, it, you, dude, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. It's, it's, it, it makes me fucking, I, if I wasn't a fucking man, I would fucking cry right now, dude. It's fucking super fucked. Foo, foobar, right? Foobar. Foobar, yeah. yeah. Foobar. It is fucking yeah. foobar. This fucking place is fucking foobar. Fucked you know up beyond all recognition. You know what? If, 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 if Russia wanted to fucking target, I say, you know what? Just give me fucking 24 hours so I can move out and go ahead. Just fucking le level that shit. Dude, it, 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 it's, it's fucking sick around here, dude. I mean, give it, give us dude. an explanation. Give us dude. an explanation on what's What's happening? Why is it just yeah, you? You can't even get a fucking beer. It's like I go, I sit down, I go, I, I, I walk up. To, I, I'm, I'm very close to Old Town, where, where the, where the Rose Parade would go by. There's some bars there. I walk up there, and I, I go in, and I, oh, you gotta put on a mask. Okay, okay, put on my fucking bullshit like this. Yeah, this, this, it's my mask. It's a, it's a t-shirt. Whatever. I guess it can cure all diseases. Like, I don't know what the fuck. So you know, it's like. But uh, you know, it's just, it's just like the 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 rigmarole. It's just like it's like you know, back in the days, you just, like Tony, you just go to a bar. Uh, what do you want? I uh, want you name the drink, and they give it to you, and you pay for it. You, you can't do that here. You, literally, like, oh, well, you you walked in without a whatever. You did this, or it's like, what the fuck? Do you want to make money? Do you want to survive? I mean, holy fuck, dude! It's it's. Dude, I, I, I swear to God, dude, I tried like about two or three places. It's not it's not possible to get a fucking drink around here. If, but, you, but you can go can but you can go to a liquor store and get a drink, okay. But but to go to, into a bar or a restaurant, holy fuck, dude. We are fucked. We are fucking major fucked here. I'm serious. Just so you know, That's what authentic means to you? Yeah. 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 Well, he's being well, authentic. Yeah. Yeah, Anthony, Anthony instead of talking about being authentic, he said, I'm going to be authentic. Yeah. I, I tried to do it. I actually tried. Oh, fuck. I tried to do it. You did the well, right I'm thing. Just... I feel your pain, man. I do. And oh, I mean, just so, just so everybody knows, in Florida, we're wide open. Yeah. I, I can go to the bar across the street on the ocean. I mean, there's not a waitress, a bartender wearing a mask. The place is going to be mobbed tonight. It's wide open. Like nothing happened, and that's the way it should be. Well, to def to defend being closed, it helped me get my dates for cheap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> see, my you know, my, yeah. My yeah. truck had women in the back because of this COVID closing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I saw that. I saw that one. I think I've got two more videos of yours to watch, but um, I I want to make sure that when I'm watching them that I'm that I, you know, just again, great storyteller and um, just does a fantastic job of talking about the Tinder dates and the, and the, the, the uh, statistics is what was important. So I'm going to go back to Anthony. So authenticity, Anthony, what do you think about that? Being authentic. You were just authentic as hell. So. Uh, uh, I, don't even, I don't even know the context, but guys, I mean, uh, I, I, I mean, Tony, all the all the, the group you bring to me, you bring me authenticity. I don't know. I I, I, I know I'm going off track, but I just oh, thank you. It's not. That's that's. I that's, mean, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm really actually fucking pissed tonight. Pissed as hell. I'm fucking beyond pissed. I really am. I'm just like I just. I'm pissed at my fellow man and my fellow fucking. We're fucked, dude. We are fucking fucked here. I don't know. Uh, we got to fucking scorch earth and go 
restart this shit because this is fucking bullshit. And I've been, Jesus Christ, dude. We got too many true believers around this fucking place, and and we need to fucking do something. It's I mean it's it's fucking serious, guys. I don't know. You got you. you I don't know. Well, I'm, that's all right, Anthony. I'm glad you ran it, and this is this is get it off your chest night, and Anthony's getting it off his chest, and I I appreciate I appreciate a um a a view from occupied California. I mean, I do. I mean, let's let's call it what it is. Occupied California. It reminds me of the movie Red Dawn. You are yeah. you are an occupied yeah. territory. I mean, yeah. really, you know. So I'd uh, like to, I'd like uh, to pull an a, I'd like to pull an AK forty seven on some son of a bitch right now. Yeah, I really would. I really yeah. would. Yeah, I really I, would. I, I feel your pain. I mean, I don't yeah. advocate pulling an AK-47 on anybody unless it's absolutely necessary. So I'm going to make that disclaimer right now. Yeah, of course. I, yeah, I do. It is necessary, of course. So, but um, yeah. I want to go to either Paul or Nutshots, Martin. Um, I'm going to go. What's what do you like, Martin or Marty or Mart? What do you like? <coughs> Any Marty will do. That's what. Okay, my, okay. Yeah. you you are now Marty. Okay. So, yeah, I'll change so, it next month. I'll yeah, we'll go to, um, we'll go, let's go to Marty because he was on here before Paul Galvin. Talk to me about authenticity. Being oh, authentic. authentic, but let me just say to Anthony, my, my brother is in the Army, and he got stationed during COVID back to Tennessee from California. What a difference, he told me. What a difference. Life is so much better in Tennessee. California, you say California is fucked. I hate cursing, but California no, is fucked. This is uncensored. So, so authentic. Yeah. Um, I'm going to tell you, what my, when I was in the Air Force, what a sergeant said, he actually talked about being authentic. He said, when you walk a path, it has to match your beliefs and your values. That's being authentic, is walking a path that matches your belief and values. And, and being transparent and authentic are two completely different things. You can be yeah. completely authentic without showing who you are, because it's a value system combined with what you portray. To, to validate if you're authentic, you need transparency. Mm -hmm. And and that's just my thought on it. I don't want to rant too much. I, but I will say, New York yeah. sucks too. You can't get a beer anywhere in New York City. Wow. Paul Galvin, you want to shoot on this? So like, kind of uh, aiming at the whole idea of of authenticity kind of relating to showing weakness. I think there's a difference between weakness and vulnerability. So when a person says like, <clears throat> like being authentic is being open with your weakness, what they really mean is being authentic or, or it is an authentic aspect to be open with your vulnerabilities. Because I think to be vulnerable and to understand that you're vulnerable in some cases, in some situations is a, is a sign of courage, is a sign of strength. And, uh, and I think that's kind of like what the people mean when they say like being open with your weaknesses. It's not necessarily weak to be honest with yourself in the moments where like, look, I'm vulnerable. And kind of when you're able to kind of uh, understand that, then you're capable of actually making change to that so that you're not vulnerable in that area anymore. So like, I forgot who the singer was, but he was, he had an interview and the lady was just like, asked him like, why are all your songs like sad songs? And he replied with like, you know, don't you think life in general is just kind of sad? And then he said, if we're able to write music and art about the sad things in life, we'll be able to understand it and focus more on the happy things in life. And I think that's kind of like where people understand, like that's what people kind of think about when it comes to weakness and authenticity. It's more of focusing and being open with your vulnerabilities rather than weaknesses. Because weaknesses I think is not the same thing as vulnerable. So, yeah, so e explain that a little more, like we, the difference between being weak and being vulnerable. So, like, weak is like, it's, 
weakness is kind of just like a state of being and vulnerable is like a a point of damage i guess it, it's kind of hard to explain it's like when a person is when a person has a house without a foundation or whatever and like there's a storm coming in they wouldn't say like it, it would be i would say it's improper to say like my house is weak rather than it, it, it makes more sense to say it's vulnerable because would you, would you say paul that vulnerable would mean you you could be taken advantage of easily would that be a good definition of being vulnerable i well, think Weak is more of a, um, how do I put this? Weak is more of a, um, a position. Vulnerability is more of a, um, more of a state of mind, but if I can put it like that, if that makes any sense. It's, it's hard to explain because I, I feel like there's a difference between the two. It's, it's like, because I think you're being, when it comes to the whole auth authenticity thing, it's like, I think you're not being authentic if you're going to just proclaim that you're never vulnerable. But to say that you're weak is a different thing. I think if it's just to say you're weak is almost as if you're giving up in the situation. And to say that you're vulnerable is like being honest about it. Like I'm vulnerable, but that, and I, I don't want you guys to think that's, that's like a state w in which the person should stay in. If the person knows that they're vulnerable, they should do everything they can to make sure that they're not vulnerable anymore. Um, it's, but I think it's inauthentic to say that a person is not weak in some aspects or vulnerable, quote unquote, in some aspects. Because saying you're weak, it almost seems as though that is like the permanent state of being. That the person is in but vulnerable is a different story i feel like it's do you think do you think vulnerability should be separated from weakness like i think there's a connotation where it's like oh you're vulnerable you're weak but i think being vulnerable um vulnerable puts you in a position to become <clears throat> strong because to me the definition of vulnerable is i understand that i lack knowledge or experience in this particular area but i have enough confidence within myself to put myself in a vulnerable situation to gain that experience for growth moving forward by not putting yourself in vulnerable situations will make you weak because it's the easy way out. That's how I see it. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> that, that's a much better way of putting it. That's yeah, kind that, of, yeah, that's a great explanation, man. I really like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think if you're saying that you're weak, it's, it's almost as if you're giving up. And, and you're essentially saying that there is no way out of this because I'm a weak person. Like, I am weak, therefore, this hill is not climbable. But if you say, I'm vulnerable, but if I put in the effort, I will be eventually able to conquer this mountain. And so that's, that's kind of like the difference. And I think kind of tying that back into authenticity, it's, it's, I would disagree with the notion that being authentic is is proclaiming that you're weak. I mean, if you're a weak person and that's who you believe you are, I mean, then be a weak person. I guess that's your choice. But let let, let me ask you the question then is that I've asked everybody, and I, you might have heard this already. So, being authentic, if you're an evil asshole, you are authentic. You're authentic. That's that's what I'm trying to say because the word authentic always makes it has a just a very positive. You know, if somebody says, wow, he's really authentic, it usually has such a, a good connotation to it. It means like, what a great person. But again, you can be an evil asshole and be authentic. Like it's being genuine. It's being real. It's being who you are. I think some people are just assholes or just evil and there's no way around it, but they are still being authentic. So that's the kind of rabbit hole I went in my brain tonight is like when I started looking at all the different definitions of what authentic means. I didn't go to Wikipedia because I'm sure that would have said something about transgender. I'm you know, <laughs> just saying. But um, um, so being being authentic, do you think somebody. In other words, 
is it possible that you can be evil and authentic? I think, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I do think you can be evil and authentic. There's, uh, there's kind of this, this, um, there's this literature that, that Carl Jung made where it was like pretty much explaining the shadow and, and it's like some people, some people kind of like they become their shadow because that's what's authentic to them. Or I guess that's what they perceive as authentic. I, it's kind of hard to say, cause I don't believe that. I don't believe that there's subjectivity in our life. Like I think everything is objective. And so when I think of like authenticity, it's kind of, it's kind of weird. Cause it, it kind of has a subjective, like underlining to it of like, it's a person is being quote unquote authentic because it's what they think they are being they are, they are being themselves quote unquote. And I just think that, I mean, at the end of the day, what you perceive yourself to be is almost an illusion, I guess. So. Well, I just wanted to, uh, to add to the thing about, you know, the difference between vulnerability and authenticity or vulnerability and weakness. Because I think I would say that like the the difference is the same difference uh, like with um, with a teachable moment like having a teachable moment is vulnerability, but revealing your weaknesses is that's the weakness, right? So you know when I think of like vulnerability, like you could you could reveal something absolutely tragic that you did in your own life a mistake that you made or something like that and how you learn from it and how other people can learn from it. And that could be a vulnerable thing because people are open to, you know, they can, they can criticize you for it. They can, they can, you know, they can come back on you for it, but you know, you've, you've changed from that and you're, and you're, you have a reason to share it with weakness. There is no reason to share it. You know, there's no reason to like, you know, you're just at that point, you're just, you're saying, "Hey, here's here's the place where you can stab me. Go go right ahead." And you know, people will. That's the thing is that you'll find out is that people people will do that if they have anger. Yeah, I don't think it's necessary to share your weaknesses with anybody. I think mm -hmm. I think if you understand that there's something weak about yourself and I I think everyone here, if you're being honest with yourself, there is something that can be improved on. Um that's like completely between you and yourself. I don't think anyone else needs to know about that. So. I know we got a great private chat going on here. I keep going back to it, man. Um, I'm not sure if, if, uh, if, if, if Marty and Primal Man, boy, some of these comments would be great in the comment section. I got to be honest, man. I think I Nutshots see. thinks he's, uh, I think he's, he don't, I don't know if he knows he's commenting in the private chat. I, I can't. I don't know how to comment in the in the public chat. I don't see the option on my screen. Maybe uh, I'm missing something. Oh, you got to have another tab open. I think for on YouTube. Oh, yeah. Just look for the comments tab. Just click the comments. No, I think I think you like what Gonzo said. You have to go to the video, like the YouTube tab. Just have it oh. muted. You know what okay. I mean? Like, and chat, I'm, looking at the comments. I'm like, these are great, and I'm seeing them in the private chat, and I'm not seeing them out on the live. But those okay, are, I'm gonna try that. Yeah, those are those are really good comments, man. So yeah, like pull fun. YouTube up on your phone and find Tony's channel and click on the video, and then you can comment from your phone. Oh, I I have another account on my phone. <laughs> no, no, my but phone you comes do, from my job, so I don't. You could do you could do like Gonzo said, because that's how I chat in the comment section. I have the YouTube tab open, you know, so just the video yeah, silent. Too. Igbo says, oh, hey, I just realized weakness is the presence of fear and vulnerability is the control or absence of fear. Anybody want to comment on that? I don't think it's the absence of fear. I, I think within itself, just the term vulnerability okay, is that it. you're placing yourself in a situation, in a, in a, in a fearful situation. Like if, it's, if, you're, if, if you wouldn't feel fear within vulnerability, then it wouldn't be a 
experience that you grow from? I think it depends on the context. I think like, like, I think if, um, I, I think, uh, you know, if you're, if you're going to have a teachable moment, you can't really have any fear, right? Cause you're not going to, you're not going to be able to deliver on that. If you, if you're, if you're afraid to say what needs to be said. Uh, and so, so I think, you know, I mean, maybe, you know, you could have butterflies in your stomach. If you're going up on stage and you're going to have like a presentation or something, you're going to tell people this teachable moment. Um, but I think you have to be able to control that. You have to be able to control that to deliver. Um, so I think, you know, yeah. And I think, you know, the, the weakness is in itself like fear. Most of the time, that's what it is. It's fear. It's, it's uh, I can't think of a better word for it. Well, I like to think of it like this, right? Vulnerability, being vulnerable, basically means putting yourself out there, whether, you know, open open to attack emotionally, physically, uh, spiritually, uh, whether you're showing weakness or fear or not. But vulner being vulnerable is you're putting yourself out there. And those of us who are here on the panel, those of us who are content creators, those, those of us who put yourselves out there, we're all, we're, we, you can say we're making ourselves vulnerable, but we don't have to like we we could be thick skin and, and and it goes back to what i'm saying about having confidence um even if you're putting yourself out there being vulnerable to attack doesn't mean it's going to take you out and it, and you don't have to show weakness um talking about that the idea of weakness i don't think i don't think any one of us or men in particular should show weakness in public uh and two others um we should have a small group uh close friends someone who we know has our back that's that's where we are able to let our guard down or show weakness to um but being vulnerable I, I believe is making you know putting yourself out there and this talk about authenticity i think a lot of people said lots of things that i agree with basically it's like in the way i see it is being real just being real. Don't wear a mask. Don't don't try to be, you know, from growing up like in the '90s, right? A poser, trying to be someone else. And it goes back to in what I was talking to, uh, where Tony talked about Nancy Pelosi. Yeah, I think she's authentically wicked, authentically evil, an authentic liar. But I have a hard time believing many politicians being authentic. You know, I look at Barack Obama. He changed his tone. He changed the way he talked depending on where he was. That's not authentic. I mean, he's an authentic scammer, maybe. Uh, authentic con man. Um, so the I mean, rest, kind, of, yeah. kind of like AOC when she totally AOC when she um, cries at the cages. No, when she talked, when she was talking, I think to a group of black women, and she was all, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, girl, that's yeah. right. Uh huh." You know, and it's like all of a sudden her tone changed, you know, and I think that was AOC. Yeah, yeah she's, she's an authentic storyteller. Oh, that, I, I, I have fear for my life looking through the crack of the door. There, I mean, yo, OK, so I I agree with you, Tony, to a point. Yes, the Nancy Pelosi, AOC, they're authentic liars. They're authentic cheats. They're authentic criminals, evil to the core. Um, but like. The way I see, and this is this is why I, I came to that the way I did. The way I see authenticity is being real um, and not wearing a mask. Um, I think one of the reasons why I've had success in life and now, because I I made some big changes when I came out to Brazil and I decided to to do my own thing a couple of years ago, was I am who I am wherever I am, whether I'm at church with my friends, with my family, with you guys. I'm not, I don't change the way I speak, the way I look to, to conform to any other place. You know, I, I made a comment in the chat, like, you know, it was Matt talking about my flags here. Yeah. You could take, you could take the man out of America. You can take, you can't take America out of the man. I am who I am. You know, I, I think of, I think about Popeye, right? What does Popeye say? I am who I am. And that's all that I, I am what I am. And that's all that I am, you know? So when I think of authenticity, it's like this, it's like being real. You know, just being real. Uh, and like you said too, Tony, you can be an, uh, uh, an authentic asshole. You sure can. 
you you sure can you know so it, it falls in that that definition so you know what uh, um marty here has a great comment that i want to address and anybody wants to jump in this would you say evil is a perception or point of view are we not evil in someone else's story dude that is a deep rabbit hole we can go down and i love that question that is that when i saw that i started thinking like who thinks of me as evil? Who thinks of me as what's their perception of me now? You know, so anybody want to touch on that? Jump on it, man. Man, Gonzo, anybody. I'm evil. Well, we know that. <laughs> well, what's that saying? Uh, every terrorist is another man's freedom fighter, right? Yeah. It's like perception and point of view. You know, we all have capability of evil within us. We all have a darkness within us. You know, uh, me coming from a Christian point of view, uh, we're all dead in our sin, dead in our flesh. Uh, we all we all have wicked hearts um, and wicked ways and wicked thoughts, right? But so yeah, it does. It's 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 how and perception is everything. It's one I sometimes what I teach my kids and my students. It's how you see things. You know, and coming as a language and an English teacher, it, it gets it gets I get into the argument about of um, encoding a message and decoding a message. It's not always what you say, but it's how it's interpreted, how it's how it's received. And it has helped me interacting with others to really think how it, exactly am I going to say it? Because I do not want it to be misinterpreted. So yeah, that's a great question. It's deep. Yeah. How would you how would you interpret this? <laughs> number one. <laughs> yeah, number one. I loved hey, I loved your brother's video, right, uh, Tony? 2021. <laughs> that was great. Uh, everybody everybody should do that. That should be the thumbnail. <laughs> yeah. I just um I just um I shot somebody a message that could actually uh would actually give probably a great perspective on this. And that's Ivan. Um, he just got back to me and said, he just can't make it. I think Ivan would be incredible right now talking about this. I think, I think he would blow minds at this point, but you never know. I just sent him the link. He might jump on. I know he's working with his team tonight, but um, I think this is something that this is a rabbit hole that I think, are you familiar with Ivan throne, Mark, Marty? <coughs> Heard of it. I've seen very little of him, but I'm a little familiar. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Check, check, check him out. Check out, check out a couple of my streams with him. And, um, and it's, it's pretty intense, super intense. So, and it's just an incredible to me, he's like he's a, just an incredible philosopher. I mean, that's what he is. Um, just, just has so much insight on everything. It, it's funny because as we're talking, I'm like, let me text Ivan right now. And uh, if he can jump on because it's just um, I shot him a text earlier. I know I know they're working on a project right now, but um, I think if he was to jump on the stream right now, he would blow minds for sure. So but um, anybody else got any uh, perspective on uh, on uh, vulnerability, weakness? Yeah, anything like that. Jump on it, man. Um, yeah. I got a comment about the. Uh, perspective on evil and all of that go for it um so i think that evil and good are actually objective like universal truths okay and i think regardless of what a person perceives to be like subjectively abhorrent uh, that doesn't matter at all and that there's only one true evil and that is uh anything that goes against the will of god is evil and and then following essentially what uh, or, or following in the image of God is essentially what is good and so in order for it in order for those to actually make any sense you actually have to believe in God in the first place it's like the transcendental argument and so mm -hmm. that's why I think that's why I think uh, that the whole idea of like you know someone else uh like we were evil in someone else's story i mean sure they may think that but they're actually wrong um because there is actually an objective evil and so you know well i'm against abortion and someone might think that's morally reprehensible because 
they think that I'm taking away the rights of a, of a woman to commit abortion or whatever. Um, but in reality, I am actually in the good and I could objectively justify that and they can't actually. They can't justify their subjective opinion on whether or not that's wrong. And so that's that's what I think of it. And, and you know what? That's great because when you said that, of course, it reminded me of the debate with, uh, is it Galaxy Universe? And when you mm -hmm. talked about, when you talked about, when he had said, you know, you're harming an animal and you brought out a great point to him about like morality. And that was one of the issues that you brought to that, that debate was like, so and when you guys talked about universal truths and, and just about like, where, where do you get your morals from? So your morals are different so morals. Are you torturing this animal? But you, I mean, you know, I know JC, man, I love the beginning of that video because he absolutely came out hard. And that was, to me, that is like a high point when I made that video on the, the vegan debate. JC came out super hard and just just full, full on. So, JC, what is, with us? Oh. Yeah. I'm what, what, was, uh, what was your main thing against uh, Mr. Galaxy Universe, JC? Like, what was your, how did that go? Because I didn't hear that part. It's right in the beginning. I've got it on the video. It's within the first five or ten minutes. So I don't know if he remembers it. JC, you remember when you? Yeah, you pretty good. I'd have to go. Yeah, I'd have to go back and listen to it to remember. But it was something along the lines of, um, I don't even remember. I would if I if I heard it, it would kind of cue a memory. But it was something from his position. From his position, he was basically putting the responsibility back on back on me for allowing the, the uh, torture or death of animals. And I think my position was that the only reason why we have, the only reason why you have that position is just due to the fact that we've created a social safety net, a social safety system. We've, we've, we've created this economy for you to have that position. If you were put out into the wild tomorrow, you wouldn't have that position. Like you would eat what you would eat based out of survival. And you know, this whole idea of veganism is often but a first world luxury. And I think that might have been the position I was coming from. Yeah, I think you're on the you're on the ballpark, but I know, man, that's kind of where I started that segment is probably you're about two or three minutes in. And again, if anybody's watching want to see the carnivore versus vegan debate, I mean there's some comments in there that we got owned, everything, but I think it was I think um, you know, when I talk about a debate um, and we debate a lot of things on here. To me, the character of a man is how you walk away from the debate. It's not during the debate. I think everything's open in the debate, but it's how you walk away. In other words, walk away and say, okay, we did this well. You know, we don't, you know, again, you guys know that I don't like that we can agree to disagree. We can just disagree. Um, I'm not a big fan of that saying. So, but yeah, I think it was, I think, uh, I think, um, I think the highlights of that was definitely JC Gonzo. I mean, I don't think he knew that Gonzo was going to become fully prepared at him. And then Paul, when you talked about universal truths, I still listen to that because I'm like, this is so good. This is just so good. It was just a real quality debate. And to me, debating again, character is when you leave the debate and you, you don't hold that anger and you say, you know what? He's, he held he held strong to his beliefs, his morals, his views, and you held strong on your side. And I think the issue with debates is that people think debates resolve issues. And nine out of ten times, they don't resolve anything. That's the reality. Hey, hey Tony, man does know he has a brother in Ireland, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Emmanuel Godson, yeah, yeah. Well, make, why do you, why do you say that? Make us make make Ireland great again. Make yeah. us. Do I look yeah. Irish? <laughs> you do. Well, I, I don't think know. It's the beard. I, I don't know if you're Irish or not, but you got a brother. You got a brother over there. He looks just like you. Oh, he looks like me. Beards. Yeah, when you were at the <laughs> wedding, he was filling in for you. 
I got I you. I have to ask a question, Gonzo. Do we have Gonzo news tonight? Yes. Yes, we, we have do. Gonzo news tonight. Yes. Well, I say it's time to do Gonzo news. Everybody oh, ready? <laughs> yeah, ready? Yeah. I'm I'm set. I'm set. Here we go. Coming to you live from San Antonio, Texas, Gonzo News. I got to ask Gonzo a question. Did you intend that to look like Joe Biden? You know, <laughs> because it sure does. That's an amazing question. You know, when <clears throat> when I first sat down to draw that, I, I kind of just started drawing it. I didn't have like a reference of like Joe Biden up, but I was kind of like, Maybe maybe this could kind of look like Joe Biden. Yeah. But I was just like I, I, I was I just thought, well, maybe it's not close enough. Maybe it's just like an old guy. It was kind of just a doodle. Oh, I can't really... it just it just looks like him so much. I mean hey, I have hey, that... Tony. Tony, can that we is... play that can we play that one more time? Sure. <laughs> that is my I have the colorized version as my header on Twitter. It's just it's just fantastic. Yeah, we'll play it one more time. Here we go. I love the Capitol. The, the Capitol building has a hole in it, like it's been bombed. I mean, dude, that is actually that's actually a pathetic drawing. There it is. We got the original here. There's the original. I got, so, I got some like half dead guy walking by. I mean, that is that is that is a Joe Biden, whether you men it or not. That, yeah. I've had people ask me, "Oh, that's Joe Biden." I'm like, "Wow, okay." Yeah, but I don't think you consciously meant that to be. I think that was a subconscious drawing, is what yeah, I. Yeah, it was like yeah. I, I think I had like Joe Biden's face like burned into my subconscious, so I was kind of just able to do it <laughs> by accident. That's kind of what happened. But it's definitely not Trump. I can tell you that it's definitely oh, yeah. not Trump. Yeah, yeah that's so. definitely not Trump for sure. So. It's kind of like one of those uh, Simpsons episodes where they, you know, have a character in the background that kind of looks like something that's relevant to the times. <laughs> it's like the yeah. Simpsons effect. Yeah, that's that's absolutely. I I just absolutely love love oh, that. Sure. Drawing. That is that's quality. So let's kick off Gonzo news. Go for it. Oh, what do you man. got? Mr. Potato is trans now. Oh guys. yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually, I don't know if he's actually trans. This is from uh, this is from AP News here. This this blew my mind. I was talking to my wife about this, and we, like we were just like, "What? What the? What's this?" Mister Potato Head drops the Mister, sort of. Hasbro created confusion Thursday when it announced that it would drop the Mister from the brand's name in order to be more inclusive, and so all could feel welcome in the Mister Potato Head world. It also said it would sell a new playset this fall without the Mr. and Mrs. designations that will let kids create their own type of potato families, including two moms or two dads. That's in insane. I grew up yeah. with Mr. Potato Head. I remember putting the lips on the Mrs. Potato Head. Again, I'm 58 years old. Mr. Potato Head was in my childhood. The yeah, original I, I had my originals. Was, you know? was it back in the day when you had to use like a, like a real potato? Oh, no, no, no. You had the potato, but you had like lips for Mrs. Potato Head. You had different ears. You had different things you could stick on them. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, yeah. We had one too, Tony. Yeah. You know, I think it's I think it's changed throughout the years. Um, you know, wh what's going to happen to Gumby is my question. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Poor Gumby. Is he next? You know? Man. As it is, I've got two. I've got two bottles up here on my refrigerator. I got Aunt Jemima and Miss Butter, Miss Butterworths. I bought those. I bought these two bottles. Um, probably, I don't know. I'm going to say I probably bought them in March. But I'm like, these are going to be collectors' items. Yeah. Yep. And I have the originals. So, you know, I don't have the glass bottle of Miss But Mrs. Butterworths, but I have two bottles. So, but continue on Gonzo News. Well, I'm gonna. 
you, you just reminded me like have you did y'all hear about the uh this was this was a while back when like jk rowling came out and and she was like uh <laughs> she was saying how like all these characters turned out to be like oh it's like hermione was black the whole time or like or like uh like griswold was gay the whole time like i feel like this is now becoming like a common thing it's where it's like we're we're just like we're including all this stuff in the children's material or it's being forced into it. And I'm just like, really? Is this where we're, this is where we're headed. I mean, they're coming for your kids, guys. They're coming for your kids. Um, but in a tweet later that afternoon, Hasbro clarified that while the brand is changing, the actual Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head characters will still live on and be sold in stores. In a picture posted on Twitter, the Mr. and Mrs. names are less prominently displayed at the bottom of the box instead of the top. While it was announced today that the Potato Head brand name and logo are dropping the Mr. I, I am, I think that's a typo. I am proud to confirm that Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head aren't going anywhere and will remain Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head, the company tweeted. So we'll see how long that lasts. Uh, that's all I have to say on that. It's going to be called They Potato Head now or something. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think the appropriate pronoun is Z. Z potato. Yeah. <laughs> the Coca Cola. John Boston just said the Coca Cola polar bear is white and now he's not working for Coke anymore. Uh. <laughs> I mean, yeah. that's, that's another thing I forgot to mention. I, I actually don't have the, the article tonight. I uh, didn't even think about that. But yeah, Coke, Coke came out with a new thing on how to be less white. Which, uh, unsurprising, unsurprising. We've been seeing a lot of that recently. Um, I'm, I'm sure y'all have heard of like the Smithsonian exhibit that came out recently too, where they're like, here's, uh, here's all the terrible things about being white. So, um, oh, yep. There, there you go. go. I don't even know if you can get them anymore. Mm. I'll have to go. I know, to I know right Uncle now. Ben should be right in the middle, and I forgot to get my Uncle Ben's converted rice. You know, oh, so yeah. oh, yeah. Has anyone seen this? Yeah, yeah. It, it, isn't that part of the uh, the Coke thing? The, the East Side identity? Community School teacher even included a white supremacism supremacism spectrum for parents to self-identify the eight That's white right. identities. White supremacists starting to be the worst. White voyeurism to be second worst. White privilege <laughs> third worst. White benefit, fourth worst. White confessional, fifth worst. <laughs> white critical. White traitor, and then white abolition. <laughs> what? I swear. <laughs> there is a, in, in yeah. quotes, in quotes on this chart, there, there is a regime of whiteness, and there are action-oriented <laughs> white identities. <laughs> People who identify with whiteness are one of these. It's about time we build an ethnog ethnography of whiteness since white people have been the ones writing about governing others. Slow factory foundation. What the? I mean, that's what? pretty, I don't know. That's scary, man. That's literally, that's, that's some, um, that's literally Nazi. <laughs> Yeah, it's fascist. That's what it is. <laughs> like, by the true definition, it's actually fascist. You know, they want to meet the biggest fascists and go talk to the anti-fascists. At least they did not say white men were the worst. You know, well, so pretty, uh... we're pretty bad. So, <laughs> I mean, you you know, people people <laughs> we've had that we've had a comment, and it was I think it was by Carly, which I don't see her tonight carly if you're watching or whatever jump on and say hi but she said great white men talking and this stream is not i don't think anybody is white here in fact i think the whitest guy is gonzo actually from what the looks of things <laughs> you look white tonight gonzo yeah, i'm pretty i'm pretty well when i turn on the lights i'm really <laughs> really <laughs> like i the worst part is i kind of i i got a pretty major tan this past year from being out in the sun and walking all day. And I, and in this lighting and with this camera, I look like I'm dead. <laughs> I'm actually going through like my head is, is peeling right now from being out Monday um, all day. And it was my first day, you know, I'm in Florida, but it was the first day in the sun, but my back is like 
itching and you know my head is actually just peeling like a like Mr. Potato Head right now. Yeah. So <laughs> Yeah, bring Amazing. bring Carly on. Carly should come oh, on. Carly Ellison? Yeah. Yeah, we have Carly. We have sure Carly is still, still fine. Right. Yeah, is Carly banned from the channel? No. I don't I don't believe so. No. No. Bring her on. Bring her on. She's got well, some I don't I don't, I don't I don't see her in the chat. She's been a regular maybe maybe she's got a date tonight or something hopefully. So hopefully. I don't yeah. think so. No, yeah. I don't think so. I I don't believe that. With a white man. <laughs> with a white man. <laughs> <No. laughs> with with they potato. Be white. <laughs> Even if she is on a date, she could probably just push him aside and come on. It wouldn't yeah. matter. Mr. Tony Bruno Potato Head. <laughs> we got two potato heads. We got me and Marty. Two potato heads. I swear to God, we look like brothers, man. When I saw your avatar, I'm like, your avatar looks like mine. <laughs> what the hell? So, it's again, like I want to real quick in between Gonzo News, I want to interrupt and just say, that again, check out check out Nut Shots. I'm gonna put a link in the description. Check out his his take. Any guys watching this, I don't care if you're black pill, red pill, gold pill, white pill, whatever pill you are. Check out his take on dating apps. You'll love it. It's just a um, great storyteller, and I'm I'm stoked to have you here, man. I really am. I was I was stoked that you you know you're spending this evening with us. You know we can we can all be doing other things tonight, but. You know, I know we're we're adding value to uh, to people's lives, whether it be a man or a man or a woman. So, and because there's only two genders, um, not sixty four. So. <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm kind of very I'm very old fashioned. There's two sexes because the gender thing is all like. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm gonna agree with you there, Mr. Finn. I like that. I like two that. Sexes, biological X X X Y, and done. Yeah. I yeah. mean, because you think about it, you think about it, right? We're, you know, we're going to be dead and gone for a while. And let's say if the world keeps on going for the next 50, 100 years, you're going to dig up these bones of a transgender woman and say, that's a man. I mean, anthrop anthropologists and archaeologists, they do that nowadays. You look at the bone structure, you can know the sex of a person. So I just I think we have we fell on this slippery slope a long time ago and we're just going head first. And we, they just keep pushing, pushing the line, you know, pushing, pushing, pushing the limit. Now, you know, where, where are we headed to next? But you see, after we're long gone, when they dig up those bones and they say, "Oh, that was a that was a man," they're they're gonna be like, "Well, you're reinforcing sexism." And, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're reinforcing oh. all these uh, these dangerous stereotypes. <laughs> not the isms. Let's not get into the isms. Yeah. <laughs> but is There's it me or everything right now? You know. But is it me or when you grew up that chicks with dicks were only in Thailand? Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 No, that's the truth. That whenever you say that, it reminds me of the movie. Uh, is it Hangover Two? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's hilarious. That is. I was. Amazing. I was also thinking of uh, Crocodile Dundee. You remember, it was in New York. And oh yeah, he, yeah, he was hitting. Exactly. He was hitting on that chick, and the guy's like, "No, that's a that's a man," and he did the he did the cup check right. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That is, you know, it's crazy. It's crazy how we've how we've gone astray, man. I mean, it just, it's just, it's just sad. It really is. It breaks my heart too. And it's like, you know, Gonzo said in Gonzo News, and I agree totally. They're 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 gunning for our kids. They're gunning for our kids, you know. And those of us who have children, we need to be. Uh, we need to. We just need to be on the front lines because, you know, think about it. Like being out here in Brazil, right? They have a new COVID strand, whatever. I was thinking to myself, this is just so bizarre. We have this virus that's so bad that you don't know you have it unless you're tested. It's like, I mean, come on, what's going on with the world? And everything is open. As far as here in Brazil, we have the restaurants are open and bars are open, but the schools are still closed. I see it, I see it as they're trying to condition this next generation to not engage, not interact, be spoon-fed everything from screens um, and... I, it gets me. It's it keeps me pretty concerned. You know, the only the only good thing I could see out of this is parents can see the value of homeschooling, and can be more involved in their own kids' lives and their education. And the parents have to be vigilant on what comes through that screen. You know, we have lots of streaming services nowadays, so we as parents need to filter and make sure that 
what they're watching has passed, you know, your, your stamp of approval. And I do that in my own home. So it's because they're after, after our kids, that's for sure. I saw somebody post something and, um, about, oh, they saw two kids fighting in, in school. And one of the comments was, well, it's the liberal agenda that's making them fight. And I'm thinking to myself, there was all these different comments. And I'm like, no, you know what? When, when, when I grew up, you can ask my brother about this. We battled all the time. And nobody got in trouble. Um, I got suspended from school a couple times in high school and in school for fighting. But it wasn't, it wasn't a big deal. It wasn't a big deal. That I mean, I remember, uh, you know, the fact that I know jujitsu and judo now, a guy basically on a full mount on me and just pummeling my face and me just, me just they didn't know what to do. I'm just getting, I'm getting, I'm getting beat to hell. And I remember when I went back to my dad, my dad, all my dad said to me was, I hope he looks worse than you do. And that was the end of it. I mean, it was that quick. I hope he looks worse than you do. And that's when I was probably 13, 14, and it was normal. And it's okay to, you know, I think it's okay. This is what happens. You know, we look at those Gillette commercials to where it's like, you know, oh, don't talk to her or, you know, or, you know, these guys, these boys are fighting. That's what guys, that's what, that's what boys do. Let boys be boys. Let girls be girls. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, I say in one of my earlier videos, it's, o it's okay for a man to be a man. It's okay to be a woman. There's nothing wrong with it anymore. I mean, in my opinion, there's nothing wrong with it. And I'm 100% on that. It's okay to be a man. It's okay to be a woman. So, but uh, what, you, what you guys are not seeing is um, because I'm a little more active on the outside, not as much as some of you, but there's a giant silent majority growing. Giant mm -hmm. silent majority, even in New York City. Because they're just tired of being shot. We have the worst mayor of all time. No, no, you don't. No, we of New York City, the worst mayor. The worst mayor we New have York. the worst mayor. We have no, the worst in mayor. New York, City, New York City's worst mayor of all time. I apologize. No, you no. Gavin fuck Newsom's you. the worst. No, no. So no. Gavin. So Gavin, Gavin is, is not like, a mayor. That's right. Gavin's not a mayor. New York, York mayor. in New York City, New York's, worst New York City well, actually, mayor is Bill de Blasio. New York City's mayor and governor is just as bad as ours. However, they actually are responsible for killing a bunch of old people. So I give them the yeah. cake for being worse. Yeah, that's what's said. But the thing about Cuomo is he's not, he, he wasn't, his father was a conservative and he's just been driven to the left and he's just been a disappointment. Just, and here's my thing. And I threw a grenade in another chat room and I walked away. You know, I as as far as I go into these chat rooms, I said, here's the thing about Republicans, about my divorced dad groups, and no one speaks about, and I mentioned it earlier in another chat. The Republicans passed a law that took alimony payments away as a tax deduction. And that is crippling men. It's bad yeah. enough to go through depression and everything, and a lot of them are borderline homeless. But if you really look at it, of uh, you know, if you make a hundred thousand and you give thirty thousand to your wife. You have 70,000, you tax at a 70,000 tax rate at 30%. So the government is getting 21,000. Now you're getting taxed, you're making 100. They're taxing you first. You're paying 40,000 in taxes instead of 21. You're left with 60, and she's still getting the 30. How, how, how is that? How do the Republicans allow this? And then how are these ultra conservative courts not giving fathers who want 50 50 custody? And that's my problem with Republicans. I don't, you know, and I support them in other measures. But the court system with Republicans is so unfair to men. And liberals are just as bad. But liberals at least will give you 50-50 in New York and California. They'll just rape you in the ass when it comes to child support. But when it comes to like being with your kid, conservative judges have this stance of family, family, family. And, and I threw that grenade out there and I walked away and I was getting killed. <laughs> no, that's good, though. But making your voice heard is, is important. You know, um, you know, I think that's real important that everybody makes their voice heard. I think I think people are afraid to speak up. You know, I think that's why channels like mine, even though it's a small channel, it's growing. And I appreciate everybody that's helping my channel grow. But I think these voices are important. Um, I think there's topics that, to be honest, that we can't touch on um, only because I'm not worried about um 
Am I worried about being kicked off YouTube? Probably not. I think there's channels 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 times worse than I. I think, I think we're coming at a lot of, a lot of um, we're, we're coming at angles that are more philosophical. In other words, we're, we're trying to back up whatever we say with a, with a truth, regardless of the outcome. But I think we, we talk about truth here. And that's what's real important to me is, is, you know, we can get back to the main topic is being authentic, being authentic to me. Again, for me, my definition of, of being authentic is, is, is a truth teller. And, you know, anybody that knows the Bible, of course, we got Paul and Gonzo and Mr. Finn and pretty much everybody on this panel knows the Bible. But what did they do to truth tellers back in the day? They pulled their tongues out. Yeah. They pulled their tongues out through their, you know, they call that Italian necktie is what Mr. Finn is referring to where they cut your throat and pull your tongue out through your throat. But they used to cut their tongue so they couldn't speak. So um, they, they nailed them to a cross. Yeah. 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 That's the truth, Anthony. So, but uh, let's move on more Gonzo news. More Gonzo news here. Let's see. Um, this is kind of a small one here, unless you have a lot of things that you're mailing. USPS delays have persisted. Bills, paychecks, and medications are getting stuck in the mail. So basically to sum this one up, it seems like, uh, there's just been a lot of the same mismanagement. Of course, we all know that, that, that the, uh, there's a, <laughs> there's a pretty big monopoly going on with the mail right now. Um, and that's what they're talking about right here. Now, obviously, you have a couple, you have a couple different alternatives. Like you've got a like what? What is there? UPS and there's a, is there another one? Oh, FedEx. FedEx, DHL. DHL. DHL, yeah, yeah. So you've got a few, but apparently, it seems like the uh, the USPS has just been mismanaged to hell, and people are, uh, especially with the first class mail. It seems like the first class mail has taken a huge hit. So if any of you guys are sending anything by first class mail, just be aware, I guess. Um, so I guess that's that's more uh, that's more swamp to drain there, probably. She'll see here. Did you, did you see the Dem hypocrisy in that? Because the Dem, the Re Democrats wanted to kill the Trump pick for the USPS, and now Biden wants to reappoint them, and everyone's quiet in the Democratic side after all that opposition they had for him before. So the, the same person that Trump wanted is yes, the, the complete hypocrisy. The, the Democratic nominee. Okay, gotcha. Um, wow. Well, that's good info because I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know either. I didn't see that. Hey, um, well, honest. So, uh, sorry to interrupt, but uh, I do have to get going because uh, I'm going out tonight, so I have to get ready. But uh, it was awesome meeting Mr. Finn, Nutshot, JC. Um, looking forward to hearing more about what you guys have to say about these topics in the future. Uh, and to everyone else, Tony, Gene, Gonzo, Anthony, who is a fellow Californian. Uh, Someone's going on a date tonight. Date nah. tonight. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Don't go to pass in. It's all fucked up. After you. I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not going to. <laughs> Don't. I'll, I'll keep the photos up. to myself. Not, not like Tony. Yeah. But. <laughs> well, there's no photos here. It's just, it's just <laughs> all fucked up. Can't even. Can't have fun here. Yeah, you can't take photos in California. You'll get arrested. So. Can have fun here, uh, Paul. Paul, we always appreciate your input, man. Very educated young guy, and um, I wish, I wish. Uh, you know, I hope Paul becomes the greatest priest in the world. Yes, that's sir. My, that's my. That's my. That's my hope. Yeah, but yeah, Paul, we appreciate you, man. Just, um, I wish there was more guys your age that were, you know, yeah, Paul, as as intelligent and as logical and as authentic as you are so yes thank you very much i really appreciate it I appreciate you man Paul, have fun in the name nice of the, to Father, meet you, Paul. the son the holy spirit <laughs> have a great time i hope you meet her i hope this lady is a great lady <laughs> and she doesn't eat too much steak <laughs> she's vegan no i'm just kidding oh, <laughs> oh, hey, Paul. 
Paul, one last thing. Just remember, she's not yours. It's just your turn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. Cold hard, cold hard truth, Paul. That's right. Paul, just remember, women waited no. to find the fuck the winners. Okay? No, no Paul. Man. Make sure she goes. You make sure women she goes. Break, they break rules for alphas and make rules for betas, Paul. That's right. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting overdosed by these red pills. I got to. <laughs> Caught carousel. Uh, Paul, don't, 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 yeah. Don't listen, don't listen to them. Paul, if she's five sure. minutes late, she's on the carousel, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Make sure. You make sure she's a good woman, Paul. That's all you gotta do. Just make sure she's a good woman. That's all. all right. Right. Cheers, Paul. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate good luck. You, good luck. All right, guys. Cool. Take Talk care. later. Talk to you guys later. Thank you. God bless you. Hey, re- really quick before Gonza moves off of the the U.S. Post U.S. Post Office Service, it, it, it's the USPS is a great example of why we don't give more control to the government. Why? I mean. There's lots of these examples, but you look oh, at the that? USPS, you look at that, that is the, a prime example me? of not to do, of not to give them more control or more what power. What did you to show me? That leave it to the private sector. That's right. What is Anthony talking about? <laughs> I don't know. Let me mute him. Oh, he's up his ladder. Yeah. He, 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 he went up the ladder. Did he go up the ladder? Anthony, Anthony come back down. The neighbors are calling the police. Uh, that's so funny. Anyways, I just wanted to throw that out there because we're talking about the USPS, how it's going bankrupt, how how packages are not being delivered. I mean, of course, what do you think? Government gets their hands in it, too much bureaucracy. Look at my case. I put in plans to get back to America over two years ago, and I'm still waiting. You know, Oh, no, it's going to be coming three years now. So anyways, great example. Yeah. Go ahead, hey, Zozo. guys, I want to uh, well, jump in just... real quick there. I want to take off as well. Thank you guys for allowing me on the chat tonight. <laughs> Nice to meet you, JC. Amazing. Much appreciated. Thank you, JC, man. Your again, your input too is always welcome, man. I I, I missed you the past couple weeks, man. I had mentioned you. I'm like, where's JC? We need him. So, no worries. Yeah, well, yeah. Always, that. always, always awesome. And uh, appreciate you, brother, for sure. Appreciate. No worries. It. Tony, thank you, Finn. Nice to meet you tonight. Not shot. Nice to meet you, Anthony. We've been on, I think, once before. Gene, we'll be chatting again. I'm looking forward to. Uh, I'll be off this Monday, so maybe I'll jump into your Monday Night Man show. Awesome. Have a quick Great. chat there, and Gonzo, it's always a pleasure. Uh, you guys uh, stay safe, and uh, we'll see you guys maybe on another stream. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Cool. Thank you, too, man. You. Appreciate it. Lessons, bro. Cheers. Awesome. Always love JC. In fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna do my little header for Monday Night Man Hour. Anybody. Monday night man hour on Primal Man channel. Um, he allows you the same thing. You can come on the stream. You can talk. You can get it off your chest on Monday night too, not just mm-hmm. Saturday night. So we're gonna do my little trailer for him real quick. That is Monday Night Man Hour on the Primal Man channel. Everybody check it out. There is a link to his channel in the description of this video. So I encourage everybody to jump on there. Um, Nutshots, I think you'd love his Monday nights, man. It's just um, it's a lot of fun. So, um, I'll be on. My Mondays are yeah. free now for a while. Yeah. yeah, sometimes it's a little late for me, and when I can jump on, I will for sure. So Yeah, 8 p.m. Central Time. Yeah, so that's 9 o'clock. Eastern time, if I'm correct, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, more Gonzo news? Yeah. um, Yeah, just real quick. I just wanted to add on to that that point that Mr. Finn made earlier, but it's absolutely true. Like, and we've seen this, we we just see this happening over and over, uh, especially recently where it's just like the the government, you know, you give them, you give them, 
an inch, they take a mile, and they do it terribly. <laughs> they do a terrible job. I love it. Like, okay, when the PG&E thing happened in California where they were shutting off the power during the winds, there was this major outcry from people who were like, oh, see, this is why businesses are bad. This is why we have to give more power to the government because they can, they'll be able to manage it correctly. And I was just telling people, I'm like, I would like you to imagine the DMV. But it's your utilities. <laughs> All right. Now tell me how that would work. All right. Please tell me how that would work. And also, I don't even consider personally, I don't even, PG&E is barely its own business, a private business, because they get, they get bailed out by the government. And they've gone bankrupt. I think they, I'm not sure if they've gone bankrupt multiple times now, but they have at least gone bankrupt uh, this time here. And uh, it was, it's just a disaster. They've done such a poor job and nobody can replace them because it's, it's a monopoly and they keep getting bailed out. So yeah, so nobody's ever going to replace them if that's going to be how they play the game. So like, guys, we can't play the government game. We can't play the big government controlling everything game because it's going to, it's going to end up like the DMV and that's what's happening with the, with the USPS. It's the same thing. Totally. And really quick before you get off that service and the way I see it, the way government is, it's like, it's so much bureaucracy because no one wants to stick their, put their neck out on the block and make those hard decisions. You have all these chiefs, not enough Indians. Everyone's there to take the credit, but everyone wants to point the finger when it comes to blame and nothing ever gets resolved. It's just a, a nightmare, you know, and we need to get back to community and smaller government and individuals and true, like, marketable free market capitalism where you don't do us a good service so i'm gonna go to that guy you know you don't have a fair price i'm gonna go to, you know so anyways that that example of the post office is just perfect yeah so that's been pretty crazy now this next one comes courtesy of a uh, man man tossed me the tip on this one thank you very much and uh this is just gold um, this comes from Fox News. American Airlines not denying possible UFO spotting. It says, talk to FBI. <laughs> talk to the FBI. What? It says here, an American Airlines passenger jet traveling from Cincinnati to Phoenix encountered an apparent UFO over northeastern New Mexico Sunday afternoon. The pilot on flight 2292 radioed around 1 o'clock p.m. CST and said that the unidentified object was flying right on top of them, according to a transmission recorded by Steve Douglas on his blog, Deep Black Horizon. American Airlines verified to Fox News that the transmission is from Flight 2292. And uh, it says here, do you have any targets up here? We just had something go right over the top of us, the pilot said in the radio transmission. I hate to say this, but it looked like a long cylindrical object that almost looked like a cruise missile type of thing moving really fast. It went right over the top of us. American Airlines confirmed that the radio transmission is authentic, but did not give any further comment on the possible alien encounter. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know. What do you, what do you guys think on this? I'll tell you what, uh, I'm, 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 I am on, I am, I don't ride the fence often, but I'm on the fence about UFOs. Do I think there's life outside the earth? Yeah, I want to believe there is. Um, I would really like, I would have wished that Trump would have brought out all the UFO information, Area 51, that whole scene, because I would like to know what's really going on. If there's something going on, I think we need to know about it. I believe it's demons. Okay. All right. Well, you know, as I mean, we we live in a spirit. I mean, we're spirits in a body. There's a spiritual world. There's a veil. You know, I think the spiritual world is just as real, if not more real. And and I okay, extraterrestrials are outside of. I I just I that's what I think it is. I think that's what's going on over there in in Europe in the Hydron Collider and CERN over there on the old ancient ruins of Apollo, and they're trying to collide, find the God particle open something up, make conne make connections. That's how, that's, that's why I see it. I mean, cause we've, you look at the, you look at hieroglyphics, you look at these, these images and, and these encounters and knowledge, you know, um, the watchers and, you know, 
That's all. I, I, and I just think it just changes names throughout the ages. That's the way I, I think it. I don't know. I don't because if you look how what all the parameters, everything that is put together for life to be on this planet, it's very delicate. It's very. We live in like what's called like the Goldilocks zone in our own solar system. A little too close, we'd burn up. A little too far away, we'd freeze to death. How everything fits together, I'm not. I don't know, right? We don't know, but I, the way I see it, it's demons. Well, I can explain that in, in two words: flat Earth. <laughs> I don't buy it either. Um, no, I. You know what? I. I. Let me tell you something. I live close to Cape Canaveral, where the shuttle goes off. And the distance that is from when I walk across to the beach, the mathematical calculation, I should not be able to see the vehicle assembly building, which is, you guys know about the, the vehicle assembly building? It is the VAB. It is just a massive building. And I can see that as plain as day on a clear day. And the calculation of the curvature of the earth and where that building is, I should not be able to see that. So where do aliens come in in flat Earth? If we're in this uh, dome of the firmament, right? And the, I mean, so where do aliens come in on that? That is the question. <laughs> That's the hey, but, question. But Tony, but Tony. I don't think, I don't think of flat Earth. I think of more of a cone is what Tony, I think. Tony, <laughs> the highest... <laughs> I the, think highest, the highest point in Florida is 350 feet. It's in like north of Tallahassee. Okay. You guys, are, you guys have a flat think fucking of, state. Think of the I, I, used to, I, used to, I used to ride my bike 15 miles from, from where I live, and I did 700 feet. That's more than the whole state of Florida Yeah. in, in 15 miles. Mm -hmm. 15 miles, and it wasn't even hard. In 15 miles, I would I would elevate myself more than the whole state of Florida. Florida I mean, everybody's, everybody's flown in a plane. How come you can see so far when you're in a plane? Florida is flat as hell. Not anywhere, but anywhere you fly in a plane, you're like, oh my god, I can see so far. Think of the yeah, well, you're in a plane. You're in 30,000 feet. I'm you know, Florida. And again, you're, you your know, perspective is Florida. You guys, you know, so, do you guys I, know how you fly to Europe? Yeah, it goes on an angle. Yeah, Why is yeah. that? Explain that. Can anybody explain Tony, that? Tony, is it Tony. Because of the curve, because of the Tony. curve, it's easier to go up on an angle around than it is to go around the curve. Okay. You see, if you okay. think about the ball, it's easier to okay. go around the... My other question, how does GPS work on a curved curve? Oh, because of satellites? Because you have, you have uh, satellites work because of line of sight. Right. So that's why you need satellite networking. So it bounces off this satellite to that satellite to get to the other side. Otherwise, if you didn't have satellites, we couldn't communicate on the other side of the planet. You okay. see? So flat Earth, you wouldn't need satellites because line of sight. Okay. And then my last argument is be Antarctica. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've heard about Antarctica. Uh, about the why wall can't we fly over it? Yeah. Because mag magnetics. Wait, wait, uh, no. We're, we're endangering the seals or something, I believe it is. Penguins. Maybe, Penguins. maybe it's the polar, the polar, the magnetic pool. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so do I question it? Of course, you know. Yeah. Do I question the, the Mars lunar rover that's doing the high definition. I, I question that. I question um, that. I, look I, like, I, it, you know, is it? There's a place they have where they make pictures and they show, like, this is actually where it's coming from. So I'm like, wait, 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 wait. I mean, are we are we too advanced now? Or is this just, you know, is it, are we, you know, is it, who was the guy that supposedly filmed the... Um, Stanley, Stanley Kubrick, Kubrick, Stanley Kubrick. Yeah, that film, film the moon landing. Oh, yeah, yeah I have, I, I do doubt that. I doubt that. I yeah. doubt that they 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 filmed over the original footage. Come on, yeah, yeah. You know, Is there's a any going on. Yeah. Um, so I I don't I don't I I think I think and we're getting a whole we're getting off a big tangent here, but I think that was and that was to bankrupt the Russians. You know, that was a whole plan to, you know, the space race because we were in the Cold War at that time. All right. Yep. But I don't know. I wasn't there. Yeah. I mean, you know, the whole thing that catches me on flat earthers 
is the only thing I tend to agree with them on is curvature of the earth. By, by the calculation on how far Cape Canaveral is from me and what I can see on a clear day is like, wait, that shouldn't happen. You know, I've seen all the laser tests. I've seen it all. You know, and anybody I think can um, can argue a point on, you know, but again, I don't think we're on a flat earth. I, I tend to, if, if I'm going to believe in that direction, I tend to think we're on a cone. We're like an ice cream cone. And then the earth is like this. And when you look at, do you know that, do you know that when you see a NASA, a NASA, um, a, a, if you look at the different photography of the earth, do you know it's not an actual photograph of the earth, right? I know. You can't get yeah. that far out there to take a picture unless. So, so. It's got to be shot together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah. it. It, it's changed over the years, if you guys have seen it. I've, so, yeah. Well, I'm not the only one who researches this stuff. So. No, I, I got caught up into it, too, because they had, there are a lot of good arguments. There are a lot of good arguments, you know, but I don't, I, I don't buy it. I, I think there's a person on this panel who actually has a copy of something I'm going to show you right now. Oh, yeah, yeah, I haven't read that. But you do have a copy of it, right? Or did you order no, a copy I, I of it? Have, I, haven't, I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm glad that. Put it again, yeah. I'll put it on the screen. Let's but, see. Yeah. It's I by Dr. Judy Woods. Yeah. Yeah. They I, know I, keep, I keep pushing this, but. They imploded on themselves. That's what happens when planes hit a building. It's, 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 planes had nothing to do with it. Well, that's another conspiracy. It's all about building. I, buildings, I, though, isn't I it? know. It's not, no. it's not a conspiracy because if two building, if two planes fly into two buildings and they more fall in, than, they more collapse than, into themselves. No, no, but more than two buildings fell, three no, buildings no. fell. So, <laughs> but, but that's, just, that's, just, that's just the basics right there. It, the but, conspiracy but, was about the Twin Towers. It was about Building 7. I haven't even read the book. Is that what it's about? No. No, no absolutely not. They really, they, it, is totally, it has nothing to do with that at all. If you want to get the book, it's like 50 bucks. It doesn't even matter. We could all read it and it wouldn't matter for shit. But the, but what happened? But what happened? To, but the result of it? I mean, really, I'm just I'm just being honest. It wouldn't it wouldn't mean shit. But the reality is, what did we do? What is we, what did we do as a country because of it? We we invaded countries that had nothing to do with it. I mean, it's it's, it's, it's when when you see that kind of shit, it's like then you understand why people wear masks and there's no fucking virus. Um, well, I've, I've, I mean, got another, I've got another theory on exactly what you're saying, why we're attacking countries, and that's a whole nother rabbit hole. And I'm going to say, Gonzo, Gonzo probably knows what I'm, I'm referring to, but I'm not going to refer to it. Okay? Yeah. I mean, I just say, you can read this book and, 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 and get the gist of it. It won't make any sense of life. But it's just a thing. It's like it's like why did why did why do why did Kennedy get shot supposedly from the back, but his his head blew out in the, in the back. It doesn't make any fucking sense. If you've ever shot a, a firearm, you know that couldn't happen. But we're supposed to believe that, right? But that was before I was born, so it doesn't really matter. But these are these are the things. You know, these are the things. I mean, well, I love all this kind of stuff. What, why yeah, is the I mean, but but dude, I mean, honestly, what's going on right now with the bullshit that's going on right now, guys, we got to get fucking mad and we got to do something. I don't give a fuck what, but you guys, we as a group, as a, as a, we got to do shit. I do shit every day, but we got to do shit. We got to fucking amplify this bullshit. This is fucking bullshit, dude. Seriously, guys. It's bullshit. Well, yeah, you know, but we've got to unite before we do anything. Yeah, the atmosphere is just. Well, fighting. we got to do something first. 
Unite? No, I don't know who's going to fucking unite. We may we may unite, and I hope we do, but we got to do something first. Because unite first? Oh, fuck, dude. There's a bunch of fucking brain dead motherfuckers out there that have united and decide that they need to wear masks. You know, I see couples walking at 4 o'clock in the morning together wearing masks. Cause I'm, do they fuck with masks? Probably not. I would imagine they go in the house and don't fuck with their mask on. I think Fauci said you should do that. The fucking, what's that? I think Fauci did say you should do that. I think yeah, he, he probably did. did. He, he probably hasn't fucked a woman in 40 fucking years. But, you know, but fuck it. You know, I mean, seriously. Dude. A- a- Anthony, 90% of the women I went out with, I mean, 90% of the women on Tinder are, are actively dating. And when I met with every single one of them, the mask came off right away. That's a fact. But the mask thing is bullshit now in New York. I don't know about California. And I had COVID, so I'm not afraid of it. I am not afraid of COVID. I had it. My son had yeah, it. I, 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 had, I had the flu. I had the flu, too. I, I, in in uh, 2020, uh, in, uh, January 3, I had the flu. And I think I probably had it five years before that. I don't know before that. I mean, yeah, it's a flu, right? What's different? <laughs> it's the a flu. little more. I had the fatigue, but you know what? It, it didn't kill me. Well, it didn't kill my son. Well, you didn't more, hurt us that more, bad. Okay. I didn't yeah, have a fever. My son. The flu don't fever. exist anymore. Yeah, yeah it doesn't gone. exist. Yeah, the yeah. COVID, 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 COVID took out the flu. Cured the flu. <laughs> well, see, that's the funny thing, and I mentioned this earlier on the stream. Isn't it funny, right? That this disease is so serious that you have to be tested to see if you have it. I mean, you can't go anywhere unless you get that stick up your nose to see if you got it. And then if you do, you got to quarantine for 15 days because it's so deadly, you didn't know you had it. I mean, come on. It makes no sense. I thought when me and my guy had it that I work with and we call one of my one of my customers, we call her patient zero. And uh, she dies when we call her patient zero. She just thinks it's <laughs> really funny. But um, after two days... You know what I did? I took Zyrtec. And I've never taken Zyrtec before. That's an allergy medication. And within like three hours, any symptoms I had were gone that quick. So maybe Zyrtec is the answer. I don't know. I took vitamin D. Me and my son just, we, a doctor called in vitamin D and a bunch of multivitamins. We were pretty good. You know, and the thing is, America is so unhealthy that something like a stronger yeah. flu could kill you. And that's the problem. Like, I lost 100 pounds. Tony's in great shape for a guy his age. You, I, when you told me you were in your 50s, I couldn't believe it. Primal Man, Primal Man, you look like a big dude. I, I, I don't know. I've never seen how tall you are. But if you guys get it because you guys are healthy, you know, you, you're likely to – you're going to be okay. It's just when you're a fat slob who has, like – 50 TV dinners a day with all that sodium and drinks 17 bottles of soda and you don't take any vitamins or get sun, of course you're going to die. Yep. Yeah. Jocko you know, Willick has it perfectly stated. He talks about it. You know, it's funny, Marty, what you mentioned about the vitamin D. I actually talked about that earlier today in another group I was uh, in. Almost everybody nowadays should be taking vitamin D, vitamin C and zinc, especially vitamin D, because that comes from the sun and that has a lot to do with our, our health, our mental focus, our our it's really it's a real important vitamin and we get that mainly from the sun and we're all like locked up we're all indoors and if even if you go outdoors sometimes we don't get the the, the right amount that we need so everybody should be taking some vitamin d as a supplement yeah now, that's the last thing i need here to be honest i mean i'm so sunburned right now that uh, <laughs> i do take um i do take um and it's only this year that i've taken them is zinc gummies yeah. there you take go dummy um I do take um, I take supplements I've been taking for years and years, um, like milk thistle, salt palmetto for your liver, for your prostate. Um, I take a a um, and I know a lot of people don't don't think that it's you know think that it doesn't help, but it's I take tribulus, which is a natural herb and it's supposedly a testosterone booster. And I've been taking that for about twelve years, pretty much every day. Um, I've had no negative repercussions from it. Um, my testosterone, I'm not going to say for my age, my test test for my testosterone for a 35 year old is through the roof and I'm 58. So, um, 
you know, the, the supplements I take, you know, do I think they're doing any good? I don't know. They don't cost me a lot of money, but I take them anyways. I don't think it hurts. So, yeah. And to hit on, to hit on Anthony's point too, about like, well, we got to get together. We got to fight back. But you know what? People just need to wake up and realize that we're theoretically still free in a way. And our first amendment, which, I mean, we still have our bill of rights, right? And the first amendment protects five rights. It's, it, it protects five of them. Freedom of speech, which means you have the right to your opinion, all right? Freedom of religion, freedom of the press, freedom to uh, uh, petition the government of your grievances. And the fifth one is to uh, freedom of peaceably assemble. That doesn't mean just protest. It means you could get together peaceably to get together, hang out. Uh, there's no, there's no uh, uh, pandemic clause that says that, you, that that's voided. And we as a nation, we as humanity, we've gone through yellow fever, Spanish flu, throughout the time we've gone through sicknesses. So, and it gets me back to this point, like, okay, fine. When this came out, it was 15 days of slow to spread. We, you know, voluntarily did this. We don't want to hurt people. Okay, so we'll lock down, we'll bat down the hatches, we'll ride it out 15 days. And then that, you know, I think back to like Star Wars and Palpatine, you give them more power, emergency clauses, they're going to start creating problems to get more power. They don't want to give it up. And now they're on a power high right now. These government officials are on a power high. You got New York, you got California. I'm from California. I know what kind of shithole it is. And I see you guys arguing which one's the worst. I think to myself, man, you got Sodom and Gomorrah talking about which one's worse. Cali's the worst. <laughs> Cali's the worst. I'm not arguing. Anthony is fucked. Yeah. He's the worst. I'm not arguing with him. <laughs> because New York City, at least we have Staten Island. In New York City, yeah. at least we have Staten Island. That's all I'm going to say. But the thing, it's not the government. It's the people. But the people have been conditioned. They've been, no, what's that well, well, Maybe they've they been have been I don't know if they've been conditioned or not. I mean, maybe they have. Oh, I know they have. I mean, well, I'm, 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 I'm saying they probably have, but you know, it's like there's too many fucking true believers out there, this motherfucker. I mean, you got people all the time. I mean, you got couples walking their fucking dog at four in the morning and they have fucking masks on. I'm like, I want to, I want to go up to them, like, guys, do you fucking bed with a mask on or do you not? I mean, oh, you're out here. It's like there's no one out here. What, what the fuck are you going to catch out here? Really? Because I mean, it, dude. dude I mean, there's a case you, study, Anthony. In New York City, all the Hasidic Jews refused to wear a mask. And not one got detained because they came out in groups, large groups. And the government can't stop these large groups from yeah, too, The problem is too much, too, too much of the population has been conditioned. And they've been... They've been just they're you know plugged into the matrix right you know talk about these red pills and stuff they're just it's just been too much brainwashing these last 20 30 years of just this entertainment and and social conditioning through media you know you have the social conditioning through media and and okay you have these people you have the silent majority okay i agree the silent majority is growing but there's only been a handful of people that are willing to stick their their neck out on the chopping block you know and just if enough people did that i think things would change you know, I see Newsom. He's he's the the signatures are growing to get him out of there. You know, yeah, but, I mean, I, I agree. I I agree that he he's probably going to be gone. But you know, honestly, it just it's the it's really not the government here. It's like it's most of the people. They're fucking they're retarded, and it's like you can't you. I, I mean, you, it, but I mean, honestly, I mean, I kind of think to myself, do I want to save the place? But it's like, but or or. I'm the most po I'm the most powerful motherfucker around here because I can walk around here without a fucking mask. I can tell people to go to go fuck themselves, and they're scared of me. I just I'm gonna, you know I'm gonna fucking breathe on you, you fucker. I'm gonna fucking breathe on you, fucker. Fucker. Could you please change yeah. your your name to I am Superman instead of Callie? I am. Fuck. I am Could the you fuck. Do that. I would love I, that. I would love I am, to see Superman. I am Sam. Superman. Yeah, I I what was that? What was that heavy metal band in like the eighties or nineties? Dio, Dio, yeah, Dio, Dio. Yeah, you're but the fucking least, uh, you're the fucking rainbow in the dark. You don't at count. Least, you at least Cali's not putting the homeless in the hotels like New York City. Oh no! And, and why do we, and why do, and why do we call them homeless? We used to call them fucking bums. 
Why don't we just call them fucking bums? If we call them bums, we can fucking solve this whole fucking problem. Oh, you're just a fucking bum. Well, get the fuck out of here then, you fucking bum. You know, but you know what's funny? You know what's funny? Anthony's got a point there, and he gets that back to my argument. Like, what I try to do, language has meaning. Language has purpose. And yeah. right. You call someone a bum because they're a bum. They don't want to do anything. They don't want to. Yeah, you fucking bum. <laughs> fuck. Fucking stinky fucking bum. You get the fuck out of here, you fucking bum. But we want to call them homeless. Oh, they're, they're, I don't even know. It's like, dude, you're a fucking bum. <laughs> but I'm, but I'm African or American. I'm like, you're just a black bum, dude. You can be any fucking color, dude. It doesn't matter. You're just a fucking bum. Get the fuck out of here, dude. I'm not giving you money anyway, so it doesn't matter. I don't care what color you are. You're a fucking bum, dude. In New York, we got 6000 a we month on the hotel rooms. 6000 oh, a month on hotel oh, rooms. Oh, fuck, dude. Dude, ridiculous, dude. You know what? I, the, we are so fucking weak here. Dude, I couldn't even get a fucking beer in Old Town Pasadena. Look, I have a beer here. I bought it from a liquor store. I'm willing to pay three times more for this beer to go just to show you guys we're having a good time in Pasadena. I can't do it. I couldn't do it tonight. Did you we wear a mask fuck. when you got the beer? I was trying to, I was trying to, I was doing everything I could do. I have a fucking, look at this, a mask. I have a fucking bandana or whatever. <laughs> like it's going to, like, like it's going to, you know. Yeah. It's just ridiculous, dude. It's just, dude. Anthony, I got one thing to say. <coughs> I got one thing to say. Comply. <laughs> oh, fuck, fuck I think comply, about what, what's that movie? Fuck what's comply. that movie? With Roddy Roddy we Piper. We live. They live. They yeah, man. They live. Yeah, they that's live. totally what's this going on. That's that's Dude. it, man. You that's know, why I have glasses on. That's why me and my because we were seeing shit you guys aren't seeing tonight. <sighs> <laughs> we were trying to check who the aliens are. Oh, Mr. Finn got it too. Anthony, you 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 you. There you oh, go. Fuck. You look like a skull. <laughs> yeah. Fuck that. You know. No. You know, yeah, it's, but, it's funny you guys know. Know. listen to this, man. I remember, I'm not even going to say when it was, but I remember, I'm going to say it was in March, probably March, April. Um, but do you know they closed our beaches in Florida and that you weren't allowed to sit? You couldn't bring a chair to the beach. Nice, nice, nice. Marty's got his glasses. <laughs> awesome. You, you couldn't, you, you couldn't sit. You couldn't sit with a fishing pole on the beach. Honest to God, and I'm thinking this is insane. They actually closed the beaches. So what happened was when people were sitting on the beach in a group, you weren't allowed to sit. Which I I couldn't figure that out back then. And the the cops would come by on their SUVs or their uh, what do you call them ATVs and. And as they're coming down, you would see people rising and walking around in like a circle just because you couldn't sit in a group. So even if the, there was only a couple things, like if you were fishing, you couldn't sit with your fishing pole. You actually you had to stand there. So sitting sitting is bad. Standing is OK. Ridiculous. Uh, and it just kind of blew my mind. And people here just like finally said, you know what? Fuck this. We're going to the beach. I mean, this is why we live here. And and then I noticed people were coming from everywhere to go to the beach just to be free. So it's like that whole thing yeah. of like, like, oh, if you put on two masks, you're like twice as protected. If you wear yeah. three masks, you know, how many, how much protection do you have if you wear like 28 masks? Why don't you just put a bag over your head and tape it with duct tape around your neck? <laughs> exactly. There you go. Exactly. There you go. Then people you won't are get doing anything. that. People are doing exactly what Mr. Finn said. Wow. They're like coating themselves in plastic. You know, have you seen the uh, maybe that's part of Gonzo News, but did you see the band where they're in this in these little huts? Yeah, yeah I fuck. saw it. Oh, fuck. I mean, the poor tuba player. Are we living in fucking clown world or is it no. me? George Orwell's <laughs> world, man. Dude, we got to we gotta pay the, world. Guys, we got to pay these motherfuckers back. We got to get aggressive. Guys. I mean, at least you guys. Yeah. Fucking it's a circus pu- galaxy. Push, push fucking back 
and punish these motherfuckers. Look, look. Mock these okay. motherfuckers. But you got, I mock on. these motherfuckers but you gotta every be, day. But you, gotta, but you gotta be smart. You gotta be smart. All right, look what I'm happened to you. Yeah, you do. You do. If you I'm want to get him back, how do you get him back? But how do you get him back? How do you get him back? Don't vote him in. Open up your business. Vote. Live your life. They put you in jail. Okay, get out of jail. Keep doing it. Get more people. You know, I mean, but Finn, Finn, they they voted. They vote. They put a potato in for a fucking president. Yeah, they put him in, Mister Potato Head. Yeah, they oh yeah. Put, <laughs> we don't have to be fuck. Don't worry about being smart, dude. Be a fucking aggressive. Be a fucking aggressive. They carry more power. <laughs> Is that Mr. Potato Head? Is what I'm hearing. It's a circus galaxy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if 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 you think if you think voting is all, you know, hey, hey, guys. I mean, obviously everybody vote, whatever. That's a that's a that's a that's a. My, my thing about voting now is what's the point of voting if your vote doesn't count? Yeah, well, crazy. I mean, Anthony, I mean, keep keep talking, keep talking about California. Yeah, you vote. Just vote. I mean, you vote whatever you want to do. Then you vote. But that's not going to... That's the start. You got to keep going. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to reach out to Mr. Finn about leaving the country. I'm looking at, like, Costa Rica or Brazil. (laughs) Well, here we have the illusion of freedom, you know? I mean, you could get get in trouble for... uh, for offending somebody too, like like everywhere you go, everywhere you go here, you have signs on every place, every every establishment, restaurant stuff that you cannot discriminate, you know, sexually or in, you know, you shouldn't discriminate anyways. But basically, you can't speak out against anything. You get in trouble, you get arrested, fine. You know, there's there's no real true place that's free really anymore. America still is the only place because we have the constitutional problem is we have puppets there. We have a, you know, deep state. You got, it's a big mess, but technically outside America, there's no real, truly free place. None. I'm looking at New Zealand. I don't know about you. They don't have the constitution. They don't have, you don't have the freedom of speech, freedom to carry out. I'm telling you. Oh shit. New Zealand lock that shit down. New Zealand lock your ass down, man. You'll be fucked there. What I'm saying is that America is the last is the last best hope. Still is. Well, I want to give California some love, real quick. This is this is what I think of California. <laughs> Dr. Dre. I think he got fucked too, right? Yeah, he did. Ready? Welcome, welcome to the wild, wild west. Wow. With a mask. That's my favorite part (laughs) right there. Yeah. I got a mask. After dark theme song. Did you did you did you guys know this could stop COVID right here? Yeah, that's Even my this? favorite California song right there, man. I mean, you know what? I I grew up with that. You know, yeah, that, you know, nice. that was that's that's California. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I mean, that's that's the reality to me. When I think of California, I always thought of good times. You know, and like and 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 that's almost prophetic because welcome to the wild wild west. And that's where you're at right now, Anthony. You're in the Wild West. Yeah, the fucked West. Yeah, I, you know, I, 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 nowadays, guys, if you want to come to California, have a good time. Just go to the beach, grab a six pack, drink on the beach. The bars won't let you fucking drink. You, know, you can't, you can't have, can't have any fun there. So just fucking go crazy. It, it breaks my heart though because I'm from California, right? And if you look back in the '80s, it was it was much more conservative. Had a Republican governor. California was, I believe, the ninth largest economy in the world, and Los Angeles County itself was about the fifth largest economy in the world. And that was what 30 years ago. And look how far it's gone from there. 
Well, look how far awesome. we've gone tonight. We've got six white guys rocking to Dre and Tupac. I mean, come on, man. <laughs> yeah. That's, you know what? We're having more hey, fun than this. Everybody's hey, hey. head was moving, even though you didn't want to. Your head was moving. I saw y'all. <laughs> hey, 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 but you know what, Tony? We're, we're having more fun here than they are at Old Town Pasadena. Because the bars there are fucking, they're retarded. I tried, I tell you, I, dude, I was trying to go there and have fun. And I was going to show you guys. But I couldn't even have fun. I couldn't even get a drink there. They, there was one rule after another. I couldn't get a fucking drink. I had to put a mask on. Just like, oh my god, dude! Like, just like, oh, why am I spending? Why am I going to go spend extra money to drink here than just fucking drinking in my house? It's like, oh fuck, dude! I'm, I'm, this, at, the point, I'm at the point in my life when it comes to masks. I. <laughs> When it comes to masks, I just, I have been just like a, I just don't wear it. I mean, I don't know what else to say. I just don't wear it. I don't care where I go. Um, the only place I've had to wear a mask was at, at a couple of estimates, and I respected the people that I did the estimate for. Um, did I get the jobs? No, because probably because I wasn't wearing a mask. But... Um, <laughs> Um, to go to the doctors to get my blood work every six months. That's that's it. That's it. Only time. Not in. Not at Lowe's. Not at Home Depot. Not at um, uh, Winn Dixie. Not at Walmart. No, I just. And I just feel like when I look at people with masks now, I'm like, I just, I, I, I actually have empathy for them. I'm like, why, why, are you just complying or? Do you really think that you're going to die? I mean, I don't know what it is. I hope you know, it's both. People walking, like Anthony said, I see people, when I, I see like a, a guy driving his F-150, I, I want to take his Ford F-150 license away that he's wearing a mask in his truck by himself. And I'm like, is, you are, what are you possibly thinking? What are you thinking? You know, people That's, walking down the bike path on A1A here, on, on the end of my street. What are you thinking? You're by yourself. Exactly. What, what the fuck are these fuckers thinking, man? You We're know. fucked, dude. If if they do that, and like I say, it's not. It, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not disappointed in the government. Government's a fucking piece of shit, anyways. It always has been. All governments are pieces of shit. But the, the general population, holy fuck, dude. These guys bought it in a hook, line, sinker, and they're doing all this bullshit. We're fucked, dude. Gonzo, go yeah. ahead. What you say? I was going to say, there was one time, I can't remember if I mentioned it on this show before, but uh, I, I was walking home and I saw this guy. He was riding on his bike and he was wearing a mask. And at first I was like, wait, what? He's wearing the mask? And I saw it was a, it was a Trump Pence mask. <laughs> So oh, nice. <laughs> it gave me uh it gave me mixed feelings on that one. It was good. It was good. It was fun. Um any more gonzo news? Uh, well, yes, I've got a few more actually I've got this is some homegrown gonzo news. Let me uh let me bring Raj on real quick. Cool. We all know Raj. There he is. Welcome, Hello, Raj. Brothers. How are you? All? Good. How are you? I'm good fine. To, good to see you tonight. Good to see you. Raj from India. Awesome. Great to have you on. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you. We're Hello, in Mr. the Bean. How are you? We're in hey, the Raj. news. So we're going to let Gonzo finish the news. So, Raj, feel free to comment on Gonzo News. Yeah, um, so this is a bit of homegrown Gonzo news for you guys because I want to see. So I, I, I reached out to my mom with this one because I was like, so you've experienced a lot more Easter's than I have. And I know you guys here have experienced more Easter's than I have. And so I want to ask you, in all y your years, have any of you seen this at your local Walmart? <laughs> you see that? 
Is that a chocolate cross? That is, that is a chocolate crucifix right there. Never seen it. That is a Hershey's brand crucifix. No, but I like the fact that they have it. Never seen it. They have that here. Hold like, that back up there. I want to put it on the screen. Oh, you want it here? Let me see if I can get it in focus. There. Where'd it go? I lost it. It's okay. I'll get it back. Okay, here we go. Let's see if I can. I let me get that. Yeah, there you go. There we go. Look at that. Mm. So. Wow. That's great. I don't know if that's a good sign or a bad sign. Because, uh, yeah, maybe. on wow. one hand, I'm like, is this Christianity coming back or are they just trying to get more people buying? Good point. Good point. You know, like, I'm not sure if you guys know the song. There's, a, there's an old song by Tom Waits called Chocolate Jesus. <clears throat> yeah. And, uh. It's funny because I'm like, wow, they actually they did it. <laughs> they came it. They came out with it. So but I thought that was interesting. Um, so let, let's ask a question around the panel: Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I'm going to look at it as a good thing. Me too. I think that's a that's a show of. I mean, you know, that they got to have some balls to do that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Hershey is a company that said, you know what, we're going to stand out. We're going to stick up for Christian people. And we're gonna, we're gonna, you know, you can have a chocolate Easter bunny, but is Easter about Easter bunnies or is it about the cross? Well, it's about the resurrection, but yeah, you needed the cross for it first. Exactly. So yeah, yeah. I would look at it as a good thing as well, but I didn't think about it the way Gonzo pointed out, and that's that's a it's a good point. But still, to put it out there, I, I think it's good because, like I said, I've never seen that. I've seen the what are those marshmallow. Those pet, what is it? I forget what they're called. Peeps. Yeah, peeps. Thank you. Those marshmallow bunnies and, and and chicks and chocolate rabbits and stuff. I haven't seen a chocolate cross. I like it. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's just something I noticed recently that I thought was pretty interesting. Um, let's see here. Speaking of food, here let's let's go to this one. You know, it's good whenever it involves Beyond Meat. Oh boy. Beyond Meat. This is from C. Uh, this is from Communist News Network Business. Communist News Network. Yeah, yeah. CNN, CNN guys. Um, Beyond Meat strikes partnerships with McDonald's and Yum Brands, and so they have uh, just inked two new major deals with McDonald's and Yum Brands that will bring new plant-based items to fast food menus. Uh, the uh, separate distribution agreements announced Thursday that will result in craveable and innovative new menu choices, the company said, including McDonald's upcoming McPlant Burger, as well as plant protein-based pizza toppings, chicken alternatives, and possibly taco fillings. For Nobody's young... buying that garbage. Nobody's buying that garbage. They aren't. <laughs> yeah, they are be... buying. The stock is up like 50%. Yeah. It's insane. That's, so that's gonna be that's gonna be at your local KFC, Taco Bell, and Pizza Hut. Yeah. And McDonald's, of course. Well, what they what what they're trying to do is they're trying to tell people to Bill Gates is one of the biggest proponents of this, is meat. eat plant based meat to save the planet. And I'm like, Yeah, okay, whatever. You know? And doesn't he own like ninety percent of the farmland in the in the United States, or some ridiculous amount he of, a lot of land. yeah. And what my opinion on that is, he's owning farmland, so when so he can actually have cows on there and take advantage of the meat. Storage. I think that's his plan. That's my theory on Bill Gates. You know, I mean, he's a good-looking vegan, isn't he? I mean, come on, you know. Yeah. The guy looked yeah. like that. I mean, he he's does. a he's a per, he's a perfect vegan. Well, you know, we just gotta get these numbers here down to zero, and then maybe oh, we'll God. be okay. Why? Gotta get the Why? human population down almost nothing, and then I think we'll be Why? Why? carbon emissions. We'll save the planet. <clears throat> we'll be a good work player. on computer. Work on computers, dude. Don't fucking worry about the rest of the world. Yeah. 
He yeah, is working on computers. Yeah. He is. And you know what's interesting? DNA is like a program. He's even mentioned it. And all of a sudden they're pushing they're yeah. pushing the 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 stick, it, the jab. No, thank you. Yeah, it, I it, saw it, that it, video too. I know the one you're talking about. If it, if you know what? The same video DNA. where he talks about actually changing the brain um, and the brain function, which is totally yeah. fucked. I mean, he's fucked. It's it, it yeah. it's kind of like it, but it ain't like it, dude. Well, he's he's also yeah. a big advocate of overpopulation, right? And they don't they don't you know they don't want to talk about genocide anymore. But there's another approach. Why the and fuck does this guy fucking care? He's fucking going to die in like 20 brains. years. This guy's going to be a fucking dead dude in, 10, in 20 years. Why the fuck does he care? You know? He's got enough money. Just fucking... I mean, I don't even know why he's hanging out with his stupid-ass wife. And, you know, just do something, dude. If you don't like life, just fucking kill yourself, dude. Just fucking just die, huh? Just do something interesting for the rest... For the rest of your fucking life, dude. Well, Read you, fucking know you know Leave what? You know what I think. Alone. You know what Leave I think it alone. is, though. I think I think if you don't if you don't have an enemy to fight, you create enemies. You know, you create a villain. And if you have nothing to live for, you start finding things to try to to live for, like like a, a religion. Like we we as humans, we need purpose, right? We need we need something. So I think that's what he's trying to do. His quote unquote, he wants to maybe make a legacy for himself, right? We but I. We don't need Windows 10 or Windows 11. Everybody should have an Apple like I have, okay? They work better, just so you know. Bill Gates, you're in second, okay? I'm just saying. <laughs> hey, hey, besides, besides Apple, someone should create a, uh, a nice bullet that would enter someone who could be called the person that we just talked about and take them out, you know, and then we could just all have a good time, you know. I'm just saying that, but I mean, I'm mean, not saying, I'm mean, not saying anything, but you know, I'm there should be, be a, I'm there, bring, could be, there could be an easy solution to this whole problem. I'm going to bring well, Abraham think, on. I'm not sure who this is, so hang tight, guys. Hang tight. Abraham, I'm going to bring you on. Unmute your mic. We're all unmute you. Abraham, man. come on. We're going to add him to the stream, so hang on tight, guys. It's after dark. <laughs> Abraham. Abraham, speak hello, now. Hello. How are you doing? Why are you running? 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 Well, I'm, I, I'm, I'm with not, him. I'm not sure what I just saw there, but I don't know if I can unsee it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what something? that was. Can anybody interpret that for me? Why, Why are, are you running? running? Why are you running? Why are you running? Yeah, I'm not sure what that was. Was that a dog like? Doing doggy style. Was it? Okay. I just told you what it was. Why are you running? Why are you running? Why are you running? <laughs> Abraham, come back on so I can ban you. Please. <laughs> what, what, what he was saying was, why is this so ironic? I don't yeah. know. Well, now you got to go blow that, like that. Yeah. All right. Wait, wait, we got one more. We got Oliver coming on. Hang on, guys. No, Hang sure. on. Hold on tight. It's after dark. Jesus. Oliver, what? speak now for you ever hold your peace. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Do it again. Oliver, are you there? Show your face, son. Good, good. Oh. What the fuck is going on? My name is Kanchi. <laughs> then this is something I can work with. <laughs> Come on, Oliver. You can do better than that, man. Come on. You know, put your money where your mouth is. Make America great again. Beat Wolves. Make America great again. Oh, make America great again. Good for you, man. All right. Let's do it. Let's yeah. Do it. Migas. Another one. Migas. 
I got one hey, thing yo, to say, Bob, Oliver. The guy, the guy with glasses, I fuck your mother, man. Nigga, <laughs> wait, wait, which guy? Nigga, <laughs> which guy? There's a lot of guy with glasses. <laughs> that guy with the beard. At least he didn't say Baba Booey Howard Stern. Yeah, no kidding. Niggas. Nigger, 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 oh. nigger, nigger, nigger. Oliver, let me ask you a question. Do you blow your father with that mouth? Um, come oh. on, seriously. Do you blow your father with that mouth, Oliver? Yes, Step he does. Put up or shut up. I blow your mother with my cock. Uh, oh, wow. That that's really original. Yeah, I can tell. That's a, that's quality. You're a, you're a smart guy. Loser. Get him out of here. You weren't even worth it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel better than that, pal. That made no sense at all. Yeah. How many Indians yeah. do Russian accents? My God. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's pretty bad. I don't know where you're from, but please go back. You are not welcome yeah. in our country. Um, you, you're going to need more than a passport, pal. So, I don't yeah. know. With it, with yeah. This administration probably be like... Hey, hey wait. We got, Christian right, Joe. we got another one. We got another oh, one. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, out. No balls, no glory. Out. No balls, no glory. Anybody that wants to join. No balls, no glory. So... Yeah. Bring a broad in. Where's Vivian? Uh, Vivian? Where's uh where's Carly? I know Carly's always I never seen her. No, yeah. Vivian's cooler. This is yeah, what you doing. You two Vivian's cool around, so it's time for the trolls. And uh it has officially been Saturday night after dark for what, thirty five minutes? Has, <laughs> Mr. Finn, have you experienced Saturday night after dark? No, man, but this is pretty entertaining, dude. <laughs> he said the best one was when we had uh, we had uh, Nick on, Nick from Jesse's show. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and <laughs> yeah, we had a full porn scene going on. Yeah, I had to yeah, actually we, blur it out on the video. Yeah, we might have to blur this one out. I too. think you got. I think you had to blur out the first one there. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm sure I will. I'll go back and blur that out so it's not, you know, not offensive to anybody. But, yeah. So all trolls are welcome. It is now uh, it is twelve oh six a.m. and officially, officially Saturday night after dark live stream. Nutshots, have you experienced our Saturday night after dark? I'm Never. Never. Yeah. Well, welcome, welcome. Troy welcome. wants to join. Troy, yeah. just shoot the thing. Come on, Troy. Yeah. Yep. Click yep. the stream, Troy. Yeah. All you got to do is hit that link right there, buddy, right ahead of you. Boom. Let's and you that, name, that name sounds familiar. Look at that. Oh, Only no. fans eat your heart out. <laughs> um, it oh, does. Yeah. Kentrell sounds sounds familiar. But uh, Troy, I'm about to say, Troy, are you are you in any way related to, to Tony 513? Yeah. Okay. That's a possibility. That's right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. 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 I, I, don't, I don't think any broads are. Really, don't don't hate. Don't. Well, Troy, you're welcome on, brother. We, there's no hate here. We don't hate you unless you're trolling. So that's that's cool. No hate I, here. I, I don't think any broads would come on here this time. He they said, don't tell me, bro. Okay. No, no problem. But uh, we're going to welcome you anyways, man. I'm going to say welcome. Welcome to the stream because now is when it can get a little crazy, and I'm okay with that. We're not going to be on that much longer, but uh, yeah. Um, I don't know what that means. I find out MOS. I don't know. Is that an acronym for anything? Months? Too, can't figure it out. He's too dopey. Mm. All right, well, we let him on. That's not a problem. Let's look in the private chat. What do we got here? Just Gene headed out. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't even realize he had out. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Got you. Let's see some new comments. Uh, California Survivor. Oh, Darren, your Survivor. Right on. Okay. Me too. Well, good for you, man. No, I don't believe it. Dead. <laughs> well, dead. I'm glad you guys got your first taste of Saturday Night After Dark. A lot of times we're not on this late. I mean, sometimes, you know, lately we've actually had some Saturday night streams that uh, 
or productive, but sometimes when it gets a little late, yeah, we get the trolls and, and I'm okay with it, you know, but, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we've, we've got called names and, um, it is what it is, but we'll go back hard. Not a problem. So, no. um, yeah, yeah, we're easy here to a point. You know. gotta be you gotta be like i said right you put it when, okay. when, we, when we when we put ourselves out there right we're we're vulnerable but it doesn't mean we're weak you know it doesn't yeah. mean that's going to take us out take us down yeah right. yeah uh, <clears throat> um, i've already banned i think three people which is cool and i'm proud of that <laughs> so, good give me i wish i could ban i wish i could ban from the fucking state <laughs> ship them out to fucking arizona <laughs> The best like part the is when he said the guy with the glasses, and I'm like, wait, everybody has glasses on. Could you be uh, more specific? I like to, I like to ban a whole fucking bunch of people from California. Pelosi, Newsom, Eric like Garcetti. I'd like to. Oh fuck them! Man. That's only. That's only. They they just do. They just do what they're fucking told, dude. It's the people who fucking just. Uh, there's a whole bunch of fucks out here. I like to fucking ship them all out to Arizona. Let them fucking bake. My brother told me the council's even more radical than the mayor. They said the city council's really bad in Cali. They said yeah, the worst they're than all, They're all fucked, dude. I mean, the, the people I live with are fucked up, dude. Well, uh, we got we got to do something crazy. Um, I, I you know what? If there's a big ass earthquake here, I guarantee you these guys are gonna fuck. It. Either they're gonna die or move. I've got I, I, I'm hoping for like a big ass fucking earthquake. Big. I've got to respond to um to Troy in California. So here we go. Had a party. In the city. <clears throat> yeah. This is just for you, Troy. Keep it rocking. Keep it rocking. Ready? Yeah. Fun yeah. to the wild, wild west. West side. Let's 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 get a let's get a. I've got to give credit to that song. That is California Love original version. Tupac. Okay, so we're gonna give music credit to the artist so youtube doesn't shut down this video so, <laughs> yeah. and we did <laughs> and we did do a commentary on the video so that is perfectly legal. you know what, you know what that that might be a solution uh an 8.0 earthquake might clear this fucking whole thing up <laughs> the big the, you know what they always say the big motherfucker if the big motherfucker these fuckers would be out, dude. All the weak, pussy-ass motherfuckers, non-preppers, all this bullshit would clear up real quick. Y'all just they need a freeze. Y'all just need a big Texas freeze. Oh, yeah. no, we need, we need a fucking earthquake because that's that's totally – because we ain't going to freeze here. No, the earthquakes and then the fires and then the mudslides. No, no, we need – no, fuck it. We need a big – we need yeah. a big motherfucker. Anthony, I say, Anthony, yes. Anthony. Tsunami. You have a ladder. A lot of people don't. Okay, <laughs> you can escape. All you have to do is turn around and go up the ladder. So That's, you have an advantage. Okay, where a lot of people in California don't have the ladder. So that, that's the yeah. The Lord gave me the ladder. But <laughs> that is that the of heaven. Yeah. yeah. Right, but that doesn't yeah. mean. You know he know he knows what has to be done here. He knows we gotta fucking fuck this place up. He knows that. That's why he gave me the fucking ladder. It's not for bullshit. I gotta I gotta claim that motherfucker. Could we but see the ladder? Right. Could we see? I want, we haven't seen the ladder. Like how far? Do, can we see the ladder? Let's just how see far it goes ladder. up. I want to see the ladder. I want to see at least some of the ladder. I want I want to oh. see it. I think it's time. I think it's time to reveal the ladder. Ladder reveal. Yeah, yeah ladder reveal. This is it, guys. This is live. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. He's not playing. Holy yeah. Shit. Is that yeah. his house? Up 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 his house? Well, yeah. well, I mean, that's interesting, but I also, if, if the ladder fucks up, 
and I can't go up, it's pretty far, right? You got a tree. If, I, if it fails, I have a different, I have a, I have a backup system. I have a cactus here. <laughs> this fucking fucking fuck. We can't find this goes up. Now that fucker would hurt. <laughs> but, it, but it's a backup. It's a backup, guys. And that's what you got to know. And yeah. This is this is prepping. This is prepping one A right here. This is it. Yes. Not only do you have a ladder, you have a rope you can go up to. So yeah, and yeah. believe me, guys, the the most the the best thing that could happen to California is a fucking nine earthquake <laughs> to fuck these people up. Yeah, I'm serious. I'm I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Lord, give me a fucking nine or a fucking ten. Because this fucking place will just go, oh, God. Can you imagine, like, uh, all these fucking actors, bullshit? Anthony, the, though. The governors. Oh, fuck. Anthony, though, this is the issue, though. You're asking for a 9 or a 10, and you're a 5. So how is that possible? <laughs> <laughs> are, are you being hypergamous? Now stop it. <laughs> Oh man, you know, Tony. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! That earthquake is never yours. It's just your turn. What type of carousel is that? Yeah, yeah, oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Here we go. SMB overload. <laughs> Mm. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah, this is the yeah, yeah, but, but Tony, man, if, if I if I could take you on a trip with me, like uh, tonight, if we could just walk together, you Let would me see how. Question. Are these the nine iron rules of Velasquez? <laughs> <laughs> I should come up with some. I don't have. The, I wouldn't have that many rules. I would only have like two or three. Because I couldn't fucking, if so, if shit came down, I couldn't remember nine rules. But I could remember maybe one, two, or three. <laughs> but I, I'll tell you. I'll I, tell go you guys, by, I go by the two iron rules of Bruno, and that's lock and load. Okay? That's yeah. It. Very simple. Yeah. Very simple. Well, here, here, lock and load would be, you'd be fucked. <laughs> lock, if, yeah. if you, if you, if. I can t I can tell you right now if you were if you were to ever shoot somebody in self defense here, your life is fucking in question. You would be. That's how people. Uh, my like my son. He's a he's a big gun. He's a big gun guy. And 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 I'm I'm glad for it. But honestly, if you shoot somebody, you're in a world of fucking hurt. I'm serious. I mean, literally. If so, you're fucked, I mean, you're, you're, I mean, I mean, that's, that's anywhere. That's even in Florida. That's anywhere in the world. A public service. Yeah, I don't give, I don't, I don't give that, a shit. Public service announcement is that guns don't kill people. People kill people. And that's no the, that, that's bullets, the bullets kill people. Yeah. Guns don't kill people. Bullets kill people. Yeah. Exactly. Great. I like that. Yeah. 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 Bullets kill people. You can, you can pull the trigger you can hold the gun, but if the if the fucking bullet doesn't make it to the fucking point, it ain't doing shit. The bullet will kill the person, and then the person will either lack blood or lack breath. But that's what's going to kill him. But regardless, I mean, I'm, you know, I don't even want to get into that point. We're not even there because the world we live in is all it's so fucked, dude. It's so I just realized that thing. The world we live in is so fucking fucked, dude. Holy shit. It's not even fucking funny. It's not funny. It's not funny. It's there a it joke. Is. Yeah. It is a fucking joke, dude. Clown world. Dude, if if I could have taken you if if I could have taken you guys tonight to see what I saw, you would just like you just fucking shake your heads and be like, you know what? Holy fuck. We are fucked. Forget fucking politicians. Politicians don't do shit. It's the people out there. 
I mean, like I've been saying, I've probably been saying it every fucking time I, I come on here. There's so many true fucking believers that, that we're, I mean, we're not fucked. If you're bored, you're not fucked. But <laughs> society in general is fucked, you know. But, you know, it just is. I mean, I can tell you, I look out there and I'm like, does anybody want to have fucking fun? Why are we the fuck are we out here? To not have fun? It's like, I'm, you know, if, no. if, if if this is a pandemic, then let's just all stay home and just like, whatever. But it's not a pandemic. It's a plan. It's not. It's control. It's not. It's, it ain't it's shit. Control. It's nothing. We're going to go, well. go, go about 10 minutes more, and I've, I've just put the link in the chat. So it, just in case anybody wants to jump on, get it off their chest, hit that link, and uh, – and let it rip, man. So uh, that's what we can do. That's what we come can on, do. Come on out here, Anthony. We'll go have a beer, man. Yeah. I yeah. might be able to go have a beer here. Oh, shit. Dude, I, love, I, love, I love to go out to – well, you're in Queens, right? But no. shit, we'll go to Manhattan. Huh? I'm in, I'm in Brazil, man. Oh, shit. I'm I'll, go to, I'll go to – you know what? I'll go every – I'll go to San Antonio. I'll go to Queens. I'll go to I'm Florida. further south than that. I'll go to Florida. Well, well, wait, 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 south wait, that. wait, wait, wait. Last week, Anthony, you were going to go live in a shed with Emmanuel. In <laughs> I'll, 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 no, I, I said I'll go, I'll go in the summertime to go over there. And if he doesn't want to pound some of those Irish bronze, I'll, go, I'll do it. With uh, you know. Fluffy Bits. Remember? Fluffy Bits. Fluffy That's Bits. Cool. I know. They got a lot of Fluffy Bits. I'm sure they – but, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, you know what? I – I'd love to go have a beer with every one of you guys. I don't give a shit. And it's going to yeah. happen soon because um, yeah. one of these days soon I'm going to have a meetup. And I think we'll all get together and and party on the beach, man. I think, oh, it's, yeah. a, I think it's the right thing to do, you know. I really do. Yeah. I think that uh, as my channel's growing, I think a meetup for, for men and women, a full-on meetup and have a great weekend, I think, I think that would be great in Florida in the open yeah. state. So. We'll, be, uh, we'll be following oh. the science. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. We have to follow the science, of course. Yeah. You know, of course. Because, um, does everybody have their mask? Your small mask. Your small mask. I do. Do you? Ready? I'll put on our small mask. On three. One, two, three. <laughs> and it works. <laughs> it does work. Yeah. It does work. Yeah. We appreciate you. Know, we appreciate the mask help, that's for sure. So not that we're making fun of masks. And can you oh. wait, can you double that, Anthony? Can you put two masks? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually I can. You know, it's funny. I it's funny that you ask. I actually can double the mask. Because it's more safer, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> can you triple the mask? I actually can. <laughs> it's funny. It's like, you know, it's like, I mean, <laughs> I can't, no, I can't. Cause I have two middle fingers. I can't do it. I'm sorry. I can't trip on a mask. But it, well, if if my wife would come out or my ex-wife or my whatever the hell she, she could do it. <laughs> my daughter could probably do it. But then she wouldn't have one, right? What's great so, is you're not even sure if she's your wife or your ex-wife. <laughs> well, she well right. Well, technically, right now she's my wife, but eventually she will be my ex-wife. <laughs> but I'm not sure she would do it. No, she might be mad at even that. Like, oh God, you asked me to give me a triple my mask. What the hell is wrong with you? She well, look, we got a, we got a, uh, we got a little. I'm gonna have to check this out to see if Dippin is right. He says, he says Bulldog is on is on is on uh, um, MGTOW Dictionary. Um, let's confirm that right now and see if our boy Mick. Oh boy! Uh, um, hang on here. Let's uh, let's do a fact check on that. Uh, I've got it pulled up. Are we going to crash a party there. soon? Is he? Wow. Okay. He sure is. He's on. Gonna crash someone's party. Wow. John Sonmez, He's on there. Yeah. Hmm. But Anthony, you come out to New York. We I could be in Long Island. They're half open, and the women are cute. Women are cute, and yeah. they're dumb. The dumb as hell. So. Yeah, he's on there. No, well, we we, we we have a lot of dumb, cute women over here too. 
Yeah, but they're, high, they're higher maintenance, man, in Cali. Cali. Aren't they? Uh, no. Uh, higher maintenance for what? Like, I'm only paying for coffee. You know my rule. I'm only buying coffee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not buying uh, that's great. I love that when you said that. Yeah. No, that's good, man. Yeah, I mean, I could probably do the same thing. Coffee, whatever. Yeah, no, I, I get matter. you a drink. Yeah. No, I'm getting you a drink. No, you know, we're boys. Oh. I, I'm not cheap. Yeah, no, 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 man. Yeah, I mean, if, if I go out there, we, I mean, I don't give a fuck about women out there. It's like, shit, we'll just have a drinks, yeah. right? But we're not paying you know, for I'm, women's yeah. drinks. We're getting them coffee because nah. we want them. We want them wired. Well, you don't want a woman said, drunk. Uh, MGTOW Dictionary yeah. banned him. Um, everybody is against him. Um, no. I don't know why. I'm not in that. I'm not in that. Uh, in that. Uh, but Dippin, if you want to click the link and you want to come on and give your story real quick, because we're going to be shutting down soon, you are welcome to jump on the live stream. Um, yeah, our uh, our buddy um, uh, Marty, you're familiar with uh, Bulldog, right? Bulldog? Yeah, I, I, I've seen a couple of his things. Yeah, you know, his, yeah, I first saw him. He had some pickup artist on his channel and. You know how I feel about pickup artists, like about giving advice to men to be pickup artists. Yeah, that you know. Um, but but I think I think John, what he does, he brings on a lot of different people. Yeah, I don't want to say he sits. No, on John's the- cool. John has yeah. got some good stuff, man. Yeah, he's he's been on he's been on here quite a few times, and you know I've I've, I've met him in person, and I'll give him a lot of uh, credit for jumping on on MGTOW Dictionary right now, live and and going hard. Um, he's, he's at least he's trying to stay. I mean, he's got a lot of heat from, uh, two weeks ago, actually it'd be a week ago, Thursday from coming on with Anthony Johnson. Oh, I um, saw that one. That was funny. Uh, yeah. Was I watched it too. It, it was, it was savage, you know? Um, you know, you know, what's funny if I, if I go back to that right now and I say, okay, when I, when we do a video of how the manosphere has failed men, Okay, it gets 2,000 views. We do a video on how the manosphere has helped men, it gets 300. What's that tell you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know, it's funny, Gene, Gene in the comments, he he nailed it because I checked it out. He's a face among the faceless, he's the only one showing his face there. All the other ones are hiding behind their avatars. It's true, yeah. I mean, it's that, it's that, um, you know, I again, I, I think, um. Um, bunch of tough guys behind a keyboard. Yeah, but I, I I like MD. I do. I like I like MD. I mean, he's somebody that you know. I could jump it. We did it. We did a little test on it. Uh, um, was it uh, Gonzo after last Saturday night stream? Yeah, it was. It was right after the uh, the how the manosphere failed men. That's yeah. I I jumped in. I jumped in uh, in uh, M- um yeah. But it was Saturday night stream. It was wasn't Thursdays, right? If I'm correct, but on oh, the yeah, yeah, maybe it was maybe it was that one, yeah. It was yeah, and so while we were we were backstage after the stream, I I made a comment on MGTOW Dictionary, and I was welcomed. I was welcomed. Um, I had some serious respect, so I give guys respect that give respect. So I have, you know, again, you know, Dippin might might uh, think differently right now. Um, but, uh, um, you know, guys are talking and, you know, we talk about, and again, I don't know if it's Ivan Crone's quote, I'm not sure if he used it, but, or, or has paraphrased it, but when the, just think about this quote guys is when, when the, the talking stops, the shooting starts, yeah. and that, that means a lot. So when people are still talking about whether it's issues with the manosphere, you know, and I know, I know, I know, Marty, you had, you had mentioned earlier that you think the manosphere is ex- I, I'm not exploding, but there's, there's tor- turmoil, but I think that's natural. I think it's locker room. I think it's, it, it has to purge itself every now and then. Um, I, I, I don't want to say, well, I, I do want to say I take sides, uh, I don't always need my voice to be super vocal, but I'm not afraid to, to, um, I don't feel the need to call out somebody, but I feel the need to bring truth. And that's the reason why we had the past two Thursday night streams. I brought a, 
a panel guests that that had something to say and I think their voices are necessary. You know, Bulldog and Anthony and Steve the Dean and those guys are, they're friends of mine. And the platform, I gave them a platform where they could speak candidly and say what they have to say, you know, but they're, they're willing to take the heat for what, for what they put out there. So it's not like, it's not like they're pussies coming on trying to hide behind an avatar or, or shame somebody. It is what it is at this point, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm just happy that uh, that I was able to provide that platform after such a such a heated uh, couple videos, you know. So I was happy that you know those guys came on and and you know gave up their time to talk about what they needed to talk about. Um, yeah. Not many. In fact, I was the only channel that was able to bring that. No, bring that was good. You did a service. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, it is what it is. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna bring on Dippin here real quick. And, uh, Whoa, Dippin's coming. Yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah. With an avatar, it's real face. Oh, we lost Tony. Oh, there you go. We lost. <laughs> no, I'm here. Okay. He, he, um, he clicked off, and then the, the uh, box is moved, and so I, I oh. kind of I hit myself for move. So, but... Um, is Bulldog from F Fresno? No hiding here. Um, I think he's actually. Um, I'm not really familiar with California, but I, 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 I want to say maybe he's Sacramento. Maybe Sacramento's more north. Sacramento, Fresno, Fresno is like in the Center Valley, but it's like it's not not too far from uh, the the National Forest, the Sequoia National Forest. Sacramento's further north. Okay. Yeah. But you know what? J John San Sanmez is the kind of guy where if you're in California and you want to reach out to him and go have a beer with him, he'd go and do it just because he's that kind mm -hmm. of guy, you know? So, you just can't go to Pasadena. Yeah. No, fuck that. Oh, no, yeah. Can't have shit there. No. Yeah. Actually, so. I, I, I just noticed on the MGTOW dictionary stream. Now we've got two guys. We've got another guy with a face. So we've got we've got two guys with a face. Oh, I gotta now. see who this is now. Who is QB, it? QB. 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 Huh. Oh, I know who he is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I may have to jump on after just to give some John some rooting. Yeah. For him. But the thing is, I was saying before that's that QB I, you know, Willie is who it is. That's who that is. That's QB Willie. Um, the reason I know that name, it took a second, but he's commented a lot in the chat, and I guarantee he's debating John right now. Um, he yeah. came. He came out in in my comments well, pretty hard at John. So, so um, the thing is about I was saying about um my why with John and a lot of these MGTOW, I have no problem with John. Is that? I represent a lot of divorced dads. I deal with them for free. There's a lot of guys going through a lot of hell, you know, hard times. Like you know, last time we had Tony, we met. He was speaking about if you need help, you should reach out. And there's a lot of guys that really need help, and there's a lot of guys on YouTube that are just looking to take advantage. There's not many Tony Brunos out there. There's not many Anthony Johnsons out there who legitimately want to help, who legitimately care about men. And they're actually people that pretend to care and they take advantage. And that's what I'm concerned about because these guys are fragile. These new people going through divorce, going through depression, they're on the edge, you know? And there's no support in the local communities, the local government. It's all about women's domestic violence shelters, helping women with their mental depression. And there's nothing for men. They're shaming men by not offering them anything. And that's what I'm only, that's my only concern is about the red pill community is – some people are out to take advantage. Like Rolo, like, you know, he has a great book, but I'm also very concerned that he's like not a role model. Oh, and there's people that just give out advice and they don't follow that path. You know, the authenticity we spoke about earlier. And, and that's the trouble. And, and, and I'm glad you said that because that is the exact reason why I brought up authenticity and being authentic. Um, and I, I, there's a reason I brought up transparency in that. All this was not just 
you know, it was it's kind of a it was kind of a segue in tonight's main topic. You know, every Saturday night I got to think of a main topic that I can get off my chest and then we go from there. But to me, that was re that was real relevant to what's going on. In other words, who's authentic, who's not. But I was trying to determine the 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 definition of authentic. So that was important to me to do that. And I also want to let people know that anybody I did get messages on Twitter and on Instagram from 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 people, and it was a lot of positive things. And I appreciate everybody who's reached out to me on Instagram and Twitter. And again, if you want to reach out to me and just say hi, teach one surfer. That's T. Two one surfer Instagram and Twitter. That's my handle. You can hit me up in private messaging there. I don't have an email that I want to give out right now. But T twenty one surfer. Um, anybody else want to give out anything? So if somebody wants to talk, feel free. Uh, if you're in New York and you need help, nut shots at Instagram. We help a lot of guys. You know, if you're struggling, we find a home for you. We have a lot of guys in our community. That if you're about to be homeless, you know, we have ideas, we offer support, you know, for free. We do this. There's no profit. We never charge. We just, it's a group of guys finding shelter for men. So if you're in New York, you know, hit me at Nutshots on Instagram. No man is going to be turned down if you need help, if you're going through divorce. Dip in, you're not alone. Just know that. So, um, you know, we're not going to, we're going to deliver you the, We'll call it some cold, hard truth, but, you know, we give a shit about you. We do. So I know you don't care about Rolo and MD. I get that. But, you know, as crazy as it might sound, um, they're all a necessary part. They're a necessary part. Everybody's voice is important, no matter if you agree or disagree. Okay? But your, your voice is important. As a man, um, I, I, I'll agree with, with, with Marty about – People take advantage of, of hurt guys. Yeah. You know, so it's rare where somebody can say, hey, just reach out to me, you know. And I think that's that's important. That's important that that's that that some of us can offer that service. I mean, I've got a you know, if somebody wants to donate to my channel, I'm not you know, I if you want to donate to my mission. Hey, that's great. If, but I also gave you the option that if you want to reach out to me and talk with me, it doesn't cost a penny. So just, you know, feel the need, you know, if, 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 um, if you need that, I'm there. That's what I can tell you. So, um, I've spent 58 years on this planet and I, I do have some wisdom, um, when it comes to a lot of, whether it comes to, um, you know, it could be a lifestyle, it could be dating, you know, I'm living in a three bedroom house, you know, 500 foot from the beach. So I'm, I'm doing okay. I run my own business. Um, I'm, I'm okay. Um, you know, this is one of the reasons why too, I'm glad, I'm glad to have you here, nut shots, because I, I instantly liked the channel. I liked his narration. I liked the, the approach he took to uh, approach you took to, to the dating app. To me, it was a, it was a, it was a, um, it was, um, it was way different than I've heard a lot, you know? It was entertaining, which I think is important. And when I say entertaining, I don't want people to think that, like, I think it's goofy. Entertaining to me, uh, like, like Mr. Finn, you have your channel. You want your channel to be, inf and I mentioned that in, in, the, in the chat when I talked to Marty, I, when I commented, I said, it's entertaining and informative. And to me, those are two really important factors when you're delivering content. You know, I mean, we had our after dark tonight. I thought that was an entertaining part of the evening. You know, <laughs> it's, you know, it's a part where we can just unload, you know, and, you know, and, you know, you can have your trolls and that's great. And then I, I gave them their shot. If they wanted to say something worth a shit, you know, they can say it, but they didn't. And that's fine too. But we also have a lot of guys that come on with valuable input like JC and everybody who's been on tonight, man, it's, it's valuable. It's valuable. You know, from Frank Pesci to man to everybody, you know, so but but I think as a community of men, um, you know, I think everybody on this panel is is doing what they can do You know, by Anthony being on here and 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 just just being here with part of us tonight. 
um, you know, that's that's helping men. He's given his his opinion, his viewpoint, and it's valuable. You know, Gonzo is a younger guy that just got married here recently, you know. So he's he can help guys in that way, you know, like he's 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 navigating that course. You know, Mr. Finn, he's he's married, has kids. Um, you know, he could talk to guys about about living in a different country or or of course what he does is teach people English. You know, Marty, you were talking, you know, you I didn't know you were that in depth into helping guys through a divorce, but I think that's 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 awesome. You know, uh, you know, so you know, I'm sure anybody that wants to reach out to you, I'm sure you would welcome. Them. You know, so, but that's that's what we want to do here. So um, let me see here. Any more comments? Listen in on me. I'm on VW. I don't know what that means. I have no idea what that means. So. Neither I. But we appreciate the comment. But, uh, maybe it's in code. I don't know. Violation watch? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's a valley in, in California. Well, that I first looked at I'm like, he's living in a boat. Nice. Okay. Well, um, so, but I think, I think we'll wrap it up here, guys. And I want to, I want to thank everybody in the chat. I want to tell Dippin, Dippin, you're not alone, buddy. You know, sometimes you got to, uh, you got to step up your game, man. That's, that's what counts. And I'm going to tell you that as a man to man, that, um, when you reach out to the right community, I say this a lot, that a lot of times guys enter Manosphere corners and they're in the wrong corner for what they need. Yeah, so, I agree. You know, get in the corner that, that's going to help you. And very, very simple. <laughs> plain, yeah. <laughs> plain, plain and simple. So, but Troy, Dippin, um, I'll go back down the stream, Dwayne Hicks. Of no course, shots. Average Joe. Hey, Joe, how you doing? I'm going to uh, have to buy that book, man. Yeah. Buy but, that book, not shots. Yeah. I'm going to have to buy it. I'm a big reader. I'm going to have to. Everybody who's participated tonight, I really appreciate it. I'm going to let everybody know how they can find me. Of course, you can find me on uh, – there it is, Troy. Yeah, that's right. Good. Victim witness, he said. Beautiful, Troy. I'm proud of you, man. Good for you, man. Awesome. Amazing. That's awesome. That's a good testimony. I own my own house in wine country. Awesome. Every time I think of wine country in California, I think of that movie Sideways. Okay. You guys know the movie? <laughs> Great movie. So, um, but anybody can find me. You can find me on, on uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. I have uh, about 15 interviews with lifestyle dating coaches Anybody from Alpha Male Strategies to Alan Roger Curry to Steve the Dean Williams, Coach EO, um, Pat Stedman. Um, I know I'm forgetting some. Coach Greg Adams. But if you want to listen to that, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor, Google Podcasts, Lifestyle Philosophies with Tony Bruno. And, of course, Instagram, Twitter. You can reach out to me there, 21 Surfer. Of course, like, subscribe. Hit the like button. Do a comment. Again, if you want that ear and nose trimmer and some tactical scope, put the best comment. Put the best comment in the comment section. If you're in the lower 48, I'm going to send it to you. So, And the only way you can contact me for your information is through Instagram or Twitter, and that's T21Surfer. So that's how you can everybody can find me. Of course, on um, not Parlor, but uh, Gab at Tony Bruno T21Surfer. So, and let's go to Mr. Finn next. Okay, cool. Yeah, so you can find me, YouTube, English with Mr. Finn. I post a tongue twist every week to help people with the fun way of practicing and working on enunciation, pronunciation. I, I'm all about helping people be better communicators. And Instagram, same thing, uh, English with Mr. Finn. I also have Gab. I don't really jump on there much. I also have Facebook. I don't jump on there much. My main two platforms is, is you know, they are Instagram and YouTube. And I'm also open, you know, you can reach me anytime on Instagram, DM me if you ever have any questions. And, you know, like Tony, I'm not 
that old yet, right? <laughs> 42, but I've I've lived all over the place, been married twice. I have tons of experience. And one of the things that I try to bring is perspective. I taught lots of different people, lots of different kids, teens, adults. And one of the things that I try to work on is both communication and perspective. So yeah, you can reach me anytime, anywhere. So thank you for having me again. Well, thanks. Thanks for coming on, man. We always appreciate your input, man. It's awesome. And let's go to our newest panel member, man, Marty Nutshots, oh, man. I'll, I'll be quick. Um, at Nutshots, uh, YouTube, at Instagram. Listen, if you want to bash, anyone wants to bash me, comment. I respond to everyone. You know, I, I, I don't care. I, I, I do it for fun. I, I don't think I'm ever going to be monetized, but I enjoy it. And, you know, everyone say thank, and thank you for the comments. Like, Anthony's been cool. You know, Tony's been great. And then to give me ideas, I love using statistics. I have a panel of like 16 to 20 women. I ask them for opinions and we run with it. We do stupid surveys and dating. If you guys have ideas, run it by me. I'm, I'm down for anything. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's awesome, man. I was, you know, I, I again, there's certain channels that um, I find for me that like, I'm like, wow, this is different. This is this is a different approach to dating and dating websites. But you also have statistics and and again, it's it's not only is it informative, it's entertaining. I think you do an incredible job of narrating and and describing the stories. I just I just love it. And um, I thought it was. I think it's again. I think what you're doing is a necessary. I think it's a necessary um, part of the manuscript is to do what you're doing and the way that you're doing it. I think is is what's what's. Um, what was really cool to me. So I appreciate it. And I got a lot of, uh, I got a lot of value out of it. I thought it was good. I thought it was very good. So thank you. Yeah. And then Gonzo. Oh yeah. Well, um, you can find my Instagram at midnight dot author. And that's where I've uh, got my, all my art. And, that sort of thing. And, and, and you can reach out to me there in, uh, as well, just for general, general queries, all that sort of thing. Um, yeah, I'm going to have some new stuff up on there soon. Uh, you can also find me on Gab at Midnight Author and there's Gonzo School on YouTube. So you can just go to YouTube and look up Gonzo School and that's basically, that's just my, my hot takes. That's basically what that channel is. It's just hot takes. Yeah, but let's also don't forget now, if somebody needs artwork done, mm -hmm. you can do it for them. You know? Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, I've got somewhere. I've I'm just starting to get um, caught up on everything. So I know there's some folks out there who have uh, some um, have some com commissions out for me. So I'm going to be getting back to everybody pretty soon here. Um, things definitely got all screwed up because you know can't ship anything in and out. We finally just started getting our water back. By the way, it still hasn't fully wow. come back. Wow. Still hasn't fully come back. So we were just kind of barely able to shower yesterday. I'm going to try and do laundry pretty soon here. <laughs> so it's been getting, uh, it's been getting, it's been getting funky up in here, guys. So <laughs> wow. uh, I was yeah. wondering how your water situation was, you know? Yeah. He was getting snow. He was, you, didn't you say you had like 15 buckets of snow one day or something? 15, yeah. Well, what I did is I, I got, a, I got a, I got my machete and I got a giant bucket. I'm going to have a video out on this soon, but I got my machete and a giant, um, I have, I have a, I have a 17 gallon bucket, which is huge. And I've got a, a five gallon. So what I would do is I would take the five gallon. I would scrape up a bunch of snow. I dump it into the 17 gallon. It would kind of melt down a little bit and I just keep filling it up again and again. That's what I did all day to get water. So, well, you're a survivalist. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. You do what but, you got to do. Hey, yeah, exactly. You did what you had to do with no hesitation. So, yeah, that's awesome, man. That's good for you. It's And it's amazing what three inches of snow and some cold weather does for a week, how it can shut down a, a whole state. I mean, that's amazing to me. Amazing. Well, it's so bad, too, because, like, to, you literally can't leave the store with more than one of these. Oh. They won't let you. Only one per customer. I had to. I. I I'm not gonna lie. I, I. 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 mean, I bought them both legally. I didn't shoplift, but I. I had to sneak one of these out. Wow. Because I'm like, I got. I got. I. We can't just have one gallon of water, you know. Um. Because you know, it's like one for me, one for my wife. It's like we got to do something here. Wow. And it. So now it's like you know now 
you're like a criminal for just getting what you need. You know, it's insane. It's like, we got to turn, and this is Texas. You know, everybody thinks it's all swell in Texas. It's like, guys, we got it. We still got to fight. We still got to fight for what, you know, for our freedoms and stuff and what we, what we have, you know, we got to fight for it. <laughs> yeah. And Dwayne says, Gonzo, where do you, where do you live to have to put up with all that? Texas, San Antonio, Texas. Wow. San Antonio. San Antonio, Texas. It's a boot yeah. camp down there. Yeah. That's okay. crazy. Alamo. Home of the Alamo. You got to fight. Well, Anthony, how can everybody not find you? <laughs> well, I would like everybody to not find me by watching uh, uh, George Bruno on YouTube and, of course, Tony Bruno on YouTube. Both excellent. Uh, uh, the gentleman, the, the ball gentleman, uh, uh, I, I, sorry, I forgot your name, but, uh, the, those videos are great. The, the shots, uh, you know, that's the, the YouTube stuff, is, uh, the, um, uh, stuff about, uh, uh, Tinder is great, man. Awesome. <laughs> I, I, I'm subscribed to you. Yeah, I'm sorry if I forgot your name. You, just say your name. Marty your name? Nutshots. Call me. You call me anything you want. Yeah, Nutshots, Nutshots. But your name is Marty. Marty. Yeah. Not, man. I I would love to go. when I would love to go to to, to Queens because you live in Queens, right? I'd mm -hmm. love to go to Queens and visit you, hang out with you. You know, I would love to, and I will. I will. We'll do I, that one time. We'll when we open, once. wait till we open. Wait till we open. No, hell, I don't give a shit. I'll just drink it to fucking... <laughs> who gives a fuck, right? Beer's a beer, right? Because if we open, beer. you're going to get down in Manhattan. Who, who gives a fuck who we're drinking with, right? We That's drink true. Fucking, right? Oh, That's they, all true. These, That's all these fucks. Point. All these fucks, right? <laughs> fuck them yeah, all. Yeah, there's man. a lot of cool guys out there. You know what? There's a lot of yeah. cool dudes. If it's if, open, if, you get more if, of them. Hey, if me and you were together, there's cool guys out there, right? That's true. Fuck them all, <laughs> right? Fuck them all. Hey, we can't rely on people, man. These these people are fucking fucked up. Yeah. Honestly, dude, you, seriously, guys. Yeah. You gotta you gotta realize there's a lot of fucked up people in this world, and you can't depend on them. You can't. You're right. You're 100 percent right, man. You can't, you can't. This this world, this world, this 2020 and 2021 is proven. We are amongst a bunch of stupid ass people. Honestly, yeah, I'm coming out to Cali when it opens. I'm gonna see. I want to see how bad the homeless is. I got. I'm gonna do oh, a video shit. just walking up to people. I'm gonna walk up to homeless people and ask them questions. You should check out. There's a video uh, that Jesse Lee Peterson put out like within the past year or so there's a video where he does that and he's like oh. i think it's near venice beach he goes like near venice beach and he's just talking to like different homeless people and it's amazing like <laughs> there's a couple guys out there who are like willfully homeless they're kind of these oh. young guys and it's just really interesting like some and you know there, there, there's literally a fight that breaks out at the beginning of the video um then there's you know there's this guy who just he just he just wants to be out there, and then there's one guy he meets who's like living in his camper, and he's like he's doing fine for himself. But I'm thinking about going to Cali, doing a Tinder profile about a homeless guy, and seeing how many women wow. match on him. Wow! Oh, oh yo, yeah. oh, <laughs> experiment! Wow! Yeah. Good experiment. Yeah. We go down there, we just take a picture of a homeless guy, a bunch of them, <laughs> and see how many matches he gets, how many liberal yeah, women he, match on him. He gets somebody. He would get somebody, man. Oh, yeah. He would get somebody. I guarantee you get somebody, but no, yeah. I mean, I, like I say, yeah, look, so I, so definitely Anthony, Anthony, you have an advantage though. Cause you have a ladder. So let's, let's put that right out there. A lot of people yeah, don't I, have a ladder. You do. Okay. I can, I can so, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, That's exactly. <laughs> like at a, at a moment's notice, like gone, disappear. So I think that's a ladder. I think that's a ladder to heaven. So if if things get too crazy, I just climb up there. God says, "You know what? You done your, you done your, you done your tour, my son. Let's go." 
But uh, for now, I'm going to have to hang out with you guys and uh, battle it on. But yeah, so who, who, so we got Joyce Bruno, Tony Bruno, uh, Nuts, Nuts Shots, and uh, Gonzo, whatever. And then uh, who else? <laughs> oh, hey, wait, wait, wait. Gonzo, whatever. That's a new channel. Gonzo <laughs> News. Gonzo School, Gonzo School. But uh, Coach I couldn't like the name of the new channel, Gonzo Whatever. <laughs> I'm gonna change my channel name now. I know it's got to be Gonzo Whatever now. I actually like that. Yeah, <laughs> Gonzo School. But you know what? The most, the most important to me. Well, not the most important, but important is uh, uh, Coach Gray. Coach Gray Adams. I love that guy, man. That guy's awesome. And he's in California. He's kicking fucking ass. And he, don't, he doesn't give a fuck. So, Coach Greg Adams. And he's he's on live three times a week. So, Just so you guys can contact Coach um, almost every live stream. And and uh, he said as soon as he can, he's going to jump on with us. So. Free agent last time. I, lo I, I love Coach Greg yeah. Adams. Right? You guys will get that guys. him. So, I, he's a busy man. I know that. He's super busy. But. Um, he's one of the guys that I, I really like, um, good guy, met him in person. Um, you know, not, he's not out of touch with real people. And, um, I think yeah. he's authentic and we'll, we'll end it with that because that's what we started with. So, but, um, we're going to wrap it up. So everybody again in the chat, thank you. And guys, if you guys want to hang out for an after party real quick, you are welcome. So we're going to still hang out backstage for a couple minutes. But uh, much love, honor, and respect to everybody on the panel and in the chat tonight. Appreciate all of you. Cheers. Cheers.